Welcome to Free Fall RC Podcast. Hi, welcome to another episode of Free Fall RC Podcast. I'm Steve, and here with me is Kevin. Hey, guys. Andy. Hey, now. And Ian. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, this is episode 309. It's a, a review series, volume 12, battery comparison. We're finally doing it. Mm-hmm. About Yay. time. Yes. All right. Let's this catch was, up with. This topic was pre COVID, wasn't it? It was pre COVID, wasn't it? Damn. It, no. it, I think it was. Well, when did we buy the batteries? So I, I want to believe right? it was pre COVID. Oh, no, it wasn't. <laughs> yeah, that was 2021. It was, <laughs> it was pre. It was pre George Bush, wasn't it? I think. Pre. Pre Vietnam, so, no, I don't no, think no. so. Let's let's get the show back on. <laughs> let's catch up everyone's week. Who wants to go first? Ian. I want to go first. Andy, no me. Right, I've been doing some flying. I flew nice. like three days last week. Nice. Damn. And then when I haven't been flying, I've been simming, trying to sim ten minutes once or twice a day. This past week. Um, it's too early to say whether it's helping because I still suck, but you know, it can't hurt is what I figure. No. I started on Friday, got on and simmed and got on Discord, with Kevin and some of the guys sim for a little while and then I've done it the last four days. Sweet, hey, man. man. Yeah. Nice. About ten about ten minutes works good for me. I can do it like 10, 12 minutes and then stop. It seems to be more helpful and then come back to it later. Like maybe do it in the morning and do it at night. Cause if I, if I do more than that, I end up just screwing around. It's not useful at all. Mm-hmm. Right. Seems counterproductive actually. Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, I, um, I don't know how many flights I did probably like two or three, two or three each day. So probably, six or nine flights so it's not bad nice. not bad since i haven't been flying any all winter all fall so it's cool cool man yeah very nice what about you kevin what have you been up to dude i had one of the best week ends uh in my rc career nice i think i'm safe saying that uh, sure. I went I went into the sim Friday night, uh, and I had a blast in the sim. I mean, it was good. It wasn't the sim wasn't it was it was fun. It wasn't like one of the best times I ever had in the sim, but stuff was kind of clicking, and I was enjoying you know the kind of there was just a few people in Discord. It was uh Tapalo and and Shaggy were there from mm-hmm. Telerotor. Andy was there. Ian was there. Um, I think Jared was in there and. Yeah. Darren Weens showed up. So it was, it was a small group, but it was, it was cool. We got, you know, we were chatting and I was simming and I started to get down four point TikToks like down. Like I was like, holy shit. Like I'm actually getting the transitioning right. And was feeling very comfortable with nose down that I really, I mean, that's like my worst one, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like nose right left is nose left is still a little bit shaky, but nose right's fine. And you know, tail down's fine. And then I was messing around with like doing rainbows and doing a slow aileron roll in the middle of it, kind of like not stopping and spinning, kind of like spinning, like doing the aileron roll as I'm moving, which is kind of initially kind of like a a brain teaser because you're like swinging Mm -hmm. around and then you're doing the opposite of what you normally do. So it's like you're pushing down, you know, and pushing with uh, with the negative collective, you know, on the other side of it. Are you doing it like a continuous through the rainbow or trying to just roll kind of in the middle of the rainbow, like rainbow roll, finish are rainbow, you like or are you like rolling the whole, whole time? Not stopping, but like doing it in the middle. Well, I'm initiating the, a slow roll that goes the entire rainbow. I'm trying to do a slow roll. It goes, nah, I'd say I'm initiating the rainbow. So I'm going from like. 45 to whatever it's half of 45 mm-hmm. and 90 you know like 45 to 65 and that's when i'm starting to like do the roll okay. and as i as i come around i'm trying to 
like stick the landing almost, you know, and and nice. stop it and flip back the other way. Yeah, that'd be cool. And it's it's that whole is once I get past like mid center and start moving over, that's when it kind of gets shorter because I'm I'm just like I said, it's like a weird thing mm-hmm. to think about after doing rainbows for so long. You're like, okay, now I got to just push back the other way. But it, I was it, it was cool, and in the sim it was nice. in the sim it was like weird and short. Uh, and then I, I was in the sim for a couple hours and then I went out to field on Saturday. Saturday was gorgeous down here. I know you guys experiencing some bad weather over the United mm-hmm. States and that sucks. Um, but, uh, and I'm not even going to joke around like, Oh, it was cold. It was 65. It was really nice. here. It was 72. It was like no wind. The field was packed with, with, uh, people. It was, it was pretty cool to see. And uh, nice. I went out and started flying around with the uh, Oxy five and I was doing four point TikToks, man, in real life. Like just as I was doing it in the sim, like nice. I was like, holy cow, like I'm, it's really clicking. I'm getting com- comfortable with nose down to the point where I was doing nose down, you know, side in different ways. And, uh, then I started just pushing the model around with TikToks, different orientations. And then those rainbows yeah. that I was talking about with the transition, actually was easier in real life for me and looked better in real life than they did in the sim. But man, mm-hmm. after that first flight where I was like, I mean, I'm still up there. Like I'm a mistake high, you know, at least to do the four point TikToks, you know, when I started and, uh, yeah, I was, I was thrilled, man. I got done with that flight and I was like, Holy shit, man. Sim is paying off, you know, like just really nice. quick for me. Awesome. Sweet dude. Yeah. And, uh, so I got a bunch of flights in like normal Oxy five, six ninety, And then this last flight I did with the six ninety, I was doing some, I did a couple of autos where I would go up and put it in lower head speed and come down and just float around a little bit. But then the last time I went up to do an auto, I came screaming down and did a sliding auto, like down the runway. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and I had, I haven't done that in probably a couple of years. I used to do it. Remember Steve I used to do it with Oxy three all the time. Like oh, yeah. an idiot. And just have a lot of fun with that. And I was like, if it over like, staples. Yeah, I was like, well, the, uh, this field's a lot smoother. Uh, Do you have the, geotex? The pole, or the, yeah, it? it's geotex. geotex. Yeah, and there are staples, but I was I was keeping a watch on it. But I came in. I don't want to say I came in pretty hard, but I didn't float it at all. I came in and like, I hit it and just kept sliding, you know. Mm-hmm. And when I got done, I had I had people like, oh. Like they didn't know what to think when they saw me do it. They were like, I heard somebody behind me be like, "Oh shit!" And then I heard somebody go, "What did he do? Land that thing like a plane?" And I heard somebody else say, "Yeah," and uh, a couple of people were clapping. They thought it was pretty funny. <laughs> nice. I like to do that on the geotech because it's so slick. Once you yeah. start sliding, just start pirouing. Oh, yeah, yeah, you nice. do that <laughs> yeah, it's cool. Nice. So you got to watch out for staples though. They'll <laughs> yeah screw you up. Not so yeah. bad on a 700. Usually it'll go over them. Yeah, but it was, like I said, it was one of the better weekends that I had in the RC. Probably the best uh, as far as that. As far as going from, like, sim stuff to real life and being pretty confident. Uh, and, you know, I, it's, it's funny when you do stuff like that. After, you know, the first time you're like, I got to make sure I do it again. So it wasn't like a fluke. <laughs> You know, so I was doing it like mm-hmm. twice in one flight and then the next flight I went up and I was like, I got to make sure I can, you know, go through it again. And it wasn't even like I had to think about it. It was, it was coming pretty, pretty natural. Hopefully I can, hopefully I didn't lose it over the week and I can do it again. And in That's the, cool. in the category of nobody really cares, I had a personal best. I put it in the show notes that I ran, I, 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 I had went out on a three mile course and I actually ran a mile and a half on that three mile course on Saturday and um, something I was proud of and nobody cares. Well done, dude. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, I'm not being a dick, even though yeah. it probably sounds like it. That's yeah. good. I couldn't uh, I was, run a mile and a half. Oh, <laughs> I was proud of myself. 30 feet. In the... <laughs> yeah, dude, don't get me wrong. I'm huffing and puffing and I pass people or not pass people, but I, I'll see other people out jogging and they're like, la, 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 la. Yeah. And I'm like, damn like, it. I'm, I'm holding a steady 80 beats per yeah. minute. Like, <laughs> I'm like pushing the capacity of my lungs, yeah. you know, right. every step. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right. So nice. who's next? Uh, I can Wanna go, go last. Yeah. Okay. And I'll go last. Yeah. 
Well, on top of working like crazy, uh, I actually was able to get a couple days off last week, and uh, one of those days I ended up going out flying and pretty much spent all day flying with uh, Keith over at the field that's like around the corner from my house. Um, I took uh, the Drake with me, the Drake 700, um, got the NX4, and I was going to try to maiden the the black nitro which that did not happen and it was like one of those things it was like so damn irritating like the only things i had to get set at the field was the you know the tail control rod you know make sure that was all set and good to go and we had to set up the throttle and one of the one of the links on the throttle link I discovered had a fucking crack in it. So it's just like, oh, great. So I had to run home anyway real quick to grab something. So I went ahead and like grabbed whatever links I could find and took them to the field. And they were all too big for the actual linkage. So it was like, oh, great. So I'll just do what I can as far as setting it up. And I'm, I wasn't even going to push the limits because I, I, I don't want that thing to just run away when the link falls off. So pretty much set that aside. Um, I knocked out like four or five flights with the Drake. Um, practiced, uh, you know, did a lot of TikToks, uh, worked on some more of those half heroes, and just really had a good time. But like on the first flight of the Drake, I clipped a tree. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. I saw that video. Oh, man. It was like, okay, just to kind of put it into a little bit of perspective, like for those who've like, who have gone to RCHO, this field it's actually just a tidbit smaller than RCHO. I mean, over at RCHO, you can fly over that tree line. But the field that's around the corner, you have a tree line, and it starts to go uphill. So, therefore, there's not really a whole lot of room, and those trees come up very quickly. Um, so, I forgot what I did, but I know I punched out. And I was in the middle of coming back down and bringing it back to me, so it was kind of, kind of a kind of a tail slide kind of thing going. But it was coming back, and I clipped one of the branches of the tree, and it, it didn't do a whole lot of damage. The only thing I noticed, like right off the gate, is like there was a like a dent in the blade and a few cracks, which to be expected. Well, as I was packing up um, the Drake, I was folding the blades back. I noticed there was like a layer of the, the carbon on the tail boom missing in like one spot and i was like oh shit Jeez. so yeah it's not terrible it was still damaged from when i uh sent it over to steve's house um yeah Is thank it you just a uh, paint layer but there's like a paint layer that can chip off it it's like a it's like a paint layer and then like a, another layer to it oh yeah so it it took off a little bit but it was like maybe like a spot of like a of like a, a dollar you know like a a dollar coin so i was like a dollar that's a big yeah. spot. <laughs> no it's like a dollar yeah, coin yeah coin okay who so says that a dollar yeah. coin well if i said a dollar you guys would think a dollar bill well who yeah, would but, say a dollar so it's like, bigger than it's almost like yeah, it's, it's like, like a quarter, quarter. A, quarter. a half dollar somebody a might half say dollar. yeah half dollar coin well a half dollar is like what like that and I know people Bigger. my age might say half dollar, but dollar bill. but nobody's going to say one of those one hundred penny coins. Dollar coin. How many people have actually seen one of those? <laughs> one of those penny coins dollar? flattened it. Oh, a dollar coin. <laughs> Susan B. Anthony. Oh, yeah. I got anyway, some of those. continue with your story, dude. But uh, so, anyway, uh, yeah, there's a little bit of damage to it, but nothing, uh, you know, nothing that's really going to be catastrophic to it. You know, I do have to get new blades anyway. Uh, well, from the tree strike, I probably shouldn't put too many more flights on them. Nothing but, uh, $200 coins couldn't handle? <laughs> Sorry. Maybe. Uh, <laughs> just just tape one of those, you know, squished out pennies around it. It'll be fine. <laughs> Duct tape. Yeah. Um, anyway, um, I put a couple flights in on the, the NX4, which I almost drove that in the ground. Um I gave it a little too much on the collective as I was doing a half pyro and just bogged the shit out of it. And it was like, oh, it was like, oh, shit. So I had to, like, flip it as it was bogging, and it, it damn near hit the ground. So 
prices averted on that one. I'm really surprised it really didn't go in. I mean, close. Um, put a couple flights in on that, um, and then we uh, pretty much got what more we could do as far as the black nitro set up. So it's like hopefully this weekend I'll be able to get it up in the air and fly it. I mean, really, that's all that I'm waiting on. But um, I was on Discord. Um, Kevin, Andy, um, Apollo, Shaggy, they were all on there. And uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun. And not one Steve. Not Steve. Not one Steve. Yeah, it was nice. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, but I will say something that was awfully irritating. Uh-oh. No sooner I get on Discord, I'm kind of going through stuff on my bench and everything. I find a package of hitch links, you know, from uh, Robo, and they just happen to fit that, uh, you know, the, the throttle linkage. So it was like, damn it, I could have, I could have made it. Right then and there, if I would have actually found that package when I came home and, and like grabbed a whole bunch of like links and stuff and ran back to the field, so yeah, yeah. Wah, wah, wah. so hopefully next weekend on that one. And then other than that, I've just been working like crazy. So that's all I've got. All right. Okay. All right. So let's see. Um. So we recorded a podcast. After that, I started working on the Black Thunder 700. So for a while now, I've had this Eagle Drift um, motor um, that I bought for specifically for competition or really for this helicopter. I mm-hmm. wanted to go with uh, a little bit smaller design, a smaller size motor, kind of like how they do mm-hmm. with the F3C folks. Um, still keeping it 12S, so it's a 4035 size motor. Um, 4035 HS series from Eagle Drift, and it's a 520 kV motor. Um, but I bought this motor specifically because it's a scale collection, and obviously I'm not using it on scale, but because of the way the size and the kV, it's, it's you know you can use it for whatever. And I bought the scale collection because I just like the logo on the scale. Like it has What's like it the like? gears and the. Um, it's in the helicopter now, so nice. I'll, I'll post a picture. But basically, it has like it has like gears and and things, so it kind of looks more. Oh, cool know, gears and things. Yeah. So how do I how nice. do I describe it? Like, I don't know if you can see it. And uh, of course not. Hold on. I'm gonna make it so you guys can see this real quick because I think it's worth. Uh, let's, yeah, let's I love gears and things. Oh yeah, looks no, like nice. inside, of a, inside of a Yeah, that's what I was yeah, gonna say. Like a timepiece. Yeah. That's cool. So because nice. of that, I wanted the scale version, uh, the scale edition here. Um, that's nice. Yeah. So I got that installed. Um, I got it with the stock. I think it's a twenty-one tooth pinion, whatever the pinion I had in there. Um, I didn't even change anything. I just slapped it together, put it in there. I didn't change anything in the controller. Um. I put the V-bar back on. This was the one that I was going to test a whole bunch of flybars units on. So um, initially, since I had the V-bar set up, I put the V-bar back on there. Um, And this, so this Saturday, I went to go fly it. So I'll kind of move on to the second point here. So I flew on Saturday um, before the snow, hail, rain, whatever this crappy weather was coming through Virginia. (laughs) Um, So I brought to the field. First of all, it it was 30. It was like about 34 degrees and about mm-hmm. seven mile per hour wind, just to give mm-hmm. an idea of what, what the weather condition was like. Um, but it was clear skies. Okay. Um, so I brought the raw electric, the raw nitro, the Kraken 580 nitro, and my Black Thunder 700. Damn. Um, right off the bat, I'm like, no one's here at the field. So I'm like, all right, cool. Let me bust out the raw electric, kind of just get a couple of flights in. Um, I may or may not have had a battery that was charged for like a week or so. So I wanted to kind of get that battery discharged. You know, <laughs> first thing, you know, it was my first priority of the day to get that battery discharged, let's say. Yeah, because it's um, been a week. I mean, yeah, God forbid you go another hour. 
I know, I know. I just, I just <laughs> couldn't, couldn't deal with it anymore. <laughs> so uh, I got a couple of flights on that, and that was uneventful. It was good, you know, kind of warm-up flights. Didn't really go too crazy with it. Um, and then I, I took out the Kraken 580 um, Nitro. And the first flight, you know, took it easy again. I, I kind of richened up the, the motor because I knew it was, it was extra cold and extra dense out. So I figured, let me just give it a little more um, fuel. Yeah. And it was running good. You know, no problems. It was running real good. I was having fun. Um, this is with 600 size blades on it now. So it's it's really feeling better on the collective stops for me. So I'm I'm having a good time with it. And and um, so, like, first flight's done. I go and fuel right back up. I'm like, I'm going to do another flight. I still got some battery on the uh, receiver pack. And I take off, and I and I get about a minute and a half in the flight, and I'm doing forward flips. But I'm kind of doing like the forward flip collective stops, and I'm doing it. I don't know, kind of low, but it's also kind of low and far out, so it's hard to gauge the floor. And on the flip from inverted to upright, um, yeah, I basically kind of like pop it up and I do a little tail slide, and I kind of hit the tail on the floor and dig the tail in. Um, the tail Ooh. boom ended up going in through the blades a little bit, Ooh, so I kind of chopped the tail boom off. Um, it popped off and cut in half. <laughs> so, you know, it did a, a karate chop and a, and a, just, you know, and it also disconnected from the heli, which is what it's supposed to do. Um, whatever, not a big deal. That, that helicopter has been, I've been flying it like it's, it's going to go in, you know, RCHO style. So I expected this to eventually happen and it did. Uh, I then, you know, on that nitro kick, I, I, Start up the, I fuel up the uh, raw nitro, and oh my god, I really enjoy flying this helicopter. Like I really enjoy it. Like to the point where like I'm like flying, and I'm like, I don't know how long I've been flying for, but I'm just gonna fly until I feel like it's too long or the motor's gonna kick out, like stall. And I ended up. That's one of the screenshots I posted. I ended up flying a seven minute, seventeen second flight. Seven seventeen. It's kind of interesting number. Um. And running the tank almost dry, like there is like a sliver of fuel in the bottom of that tank in that that second picture um, that I posted there. Um, so, of course, you know, having a great flight, I'm like, oh, heck yeah, I'm gonna fuel this bitch back up and I'm gonna throw it right back up in the air. And I start fueling up, and then I notice my Jersey Mahler can and the, the little electric pump I have is like making weird noises, and I look and I'm like. Damn it, no fuel left in the can. I got about oh. half, like less than half a tank in the, in the yeah, oh. less than half a tank in the heli, and I'm just like, I mean, I could fly a couple minutes. I'm like, oh, I can't believe I didn't bring any more fuel. <laughs> any more 22 and a half. Let's, I did have 30%, but this is a oh, OS-105 shim for 22 and a half, so I'm like, ah, oh, damn it, I ran out of fuel. Um... So then I threw up the Black Thunder 700, and I flew that one battery pack, testing out, you know, whatever 60% is, like, it's like 1,400, 1,500 on the head, just low head speed, you know, you take off, and you move the helicopter, and you do one of these half a lips thingies, and then you move it back, and then I got bored, and I did some upstairs maneuvers to see, like, how that felt with the new motor, um, see if it you know, felt like it had good power, felt, you know, see how it performed on bank two and bank three. And I couldn't, I, you know, I couldn't tell the difference, to be honest. Like, I had yeah. an X Nova Lightning 45, 25, 560 in there, and I could not tell the difference with this 40, 35, 520 KV doing the F3C stuff. Obviously, if I were to, like, probably kick it up and do some crazy head speed stuff, I'd probably notice it, and the It'll probably, probably come down hot. But yeah, for the F3C stuff that I was, the sportsman class, I was just messing around with. Um, I ended up doing four minutes of that, and I was like, okay, cool, I'll land. And um, yeah, the motor was cool. You see, I think I pulled like like 80 amps or something, like something slow and low. Jeez. That wasn't bad. Okay, the last two flights. I did a lot of flights flying that day, and this is only within like a three and a half hour 
time at the field, which I love going to the field when, and when there's no one there sometimes just because you can get these flights in. But um, I went back to the raw electric and I had two batteries with me that I charged up. I guess in, in a little bit of haste, you know, because I was supposed to get a, a certain 580 size helicopter on Friday, but I didn't end up actually getting it till today. But um, so I charged up a 7S pack and I charged up an 8S pack, uh, the two 4S um, packs I have for an 8S setup. And I'm like, what the heck? Let me fly it in the raw. Let's see what it feels like. So, you know, I did the 8S first to try out. And these are Maniacs Eco packs. These are, um, I think they're 25C. <laughs> like they're like, receiver pack C rating. <laughs> like I think they're 25 C packs. They're eco powered. They're 4,200 milliamp 4S packs. And there's two of them. They're like the white ones. And I just threw it in a raw and let me see what, you know, bank three and, and see what it goes. And it was about, I think I was pulling 1450, 1460 on the head. At least that's what I was reading. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, it felt very similar to the raw nitro like flight characteristics mm -hmm. weight um pop how it moved like when i punched it you know giving full collective mm -hmm. punches and seeing how it moves and how it's handling the i don't know what i have 12 and a half 13 degrees of, of pitch um it was awesome i did a five minute flight and I came down with about 35 on the battery. So I think it was probably about 10% remaining. Um, so I think I leave about 25 in. So probably said 10% remaining on the battery. I did a five minute flight and I pulled about 80 amps on that or less than that, 79 or something like that. But I was doing all the stuff I was doing on the raw nitro mm -hmm. Damn. on this helicopter running it at ETS setup, which impressed nice. the copy. Now the head speed is much lower. It doesn't make the same noises, obviously, minus, you know, minus the engine noise, obviously, too. But it doesn't make, well, like, you know, the blade noises and the tail noises. It's not running the head speeds that the raw nitro is running. But, you know, running the, the switch blades that I'm running, um, it just felt, like, so similar. Well, it's a, it's a lot lower head speed, but it's also a lot lighter. Yes. And I'll go I used into, to run 6S on 700s mm -hmm. all the time, just for yep. fun here and there. It's it's a lot of fun. So what I did the next time, well, the next flight is now I had the 7S pack. So it's the same 7X, Maniacs, mm -hmm. 4500 C, uh, 70 C pack. It's a, it's a pretty beefy pack. And I was pulling about 1380 on the head with 7S. And that was not enough head speed way not enough head speed where i was doing maneuvers and i twice there were two moments where i i thought the raw was going to go in because i just didn't have enough to stop the helicopter um yeah, you gotta think ahead and the timing that for sure yeah. mm -hmm. like i know the maneuver is what i'm going to do but like normally when you have a little bit more head speed and pop and float you can you know you the timing timing becomes like like it's easy to set up your timing. You 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 recognize your timing every time you do your collective stops and everything. But when you run that low head speed with the same pitch, mm -hmm. the timing gets thrown off. So you have to, like you said, you have to be kind of ahead of it and and not try to do it so low. Mm -hmm. But um, but I was thoroughly amazed how great the raw electric flew. Head speed, um, with the maneuvers that I'm trying to do, um. I know you were talking about Kevin four point TikToks. I was not practicing four point TikToks, but I was practicing four point rainbows. Um, nice. Because I wanted to really learn the transition. You know, when you go tick and then you start pushing and you do the aileron, you're, you're rotating, doing the roll, you're doing the rudder with the your aileron to push it like this. I want to get those really like pow, like so I'm not like fixing it. You know, when I'm doing it, I want to make sure I'm like. I'm hitting that 90 degree points or uh, every time. So, so yeah. I, I've, I've been doing rainbows to slow it down to kind of like, you know, um, get the maneuver and the timing down. But one other maneuver that I've been messing with a while back 
was like this paint stirry thing TikTok, so where you kind of like yeah. stir the thing and it's really messy for me and i can kind of do it and i can keep it in the air but it's really messy but i was i figured out like a different maneuver for me to do and i don't know what it's called but it's a TikTok. but i do 45s so i i do a tick tock and then the next time i do 45 and then i i do 45s each time um so it's still tail down, but uh, you know the helicopter's in that forty-five degree angle. Yeah, yeah. At, at every other TikTok, and I was practicing that, and it was actually I was actually doing it on the raw electric at fourteen hundred, <laughs> which was impressive. But um, but yeah, I was doing that on the nitro and and all the helis, and I thought like I was like it's a pretty cool maneuver for me to kind of work out because yeah. I can I want to try to do it like across the sky, you know. Those are mm-hmm. those are fun because you they get you. I don't know for me they get me pumped because i'm doing it like one that way and then i'm swinging around and doing it it's like mm-hmm. it, it just looks cool yeah. yeah so um all right beyond that so i did crash the kraken 580 nitro so um part of the wrenching i did this week was i did take out the motor esc and neo out of the kraken 580 electric um as a donor for the 580 raw electric so I had uh, basically all the parts I needed to fix the Kraken 580 Nitro. So the tail boom went on, the head went on. Um, really, that was it. <laughs> the tail and the head. Um, nice. And the swash plate, because I, I bent the, swat, the crap out of the swash plate. Never done that before. Yeah. Uh, saw so, that, man. That was crazy. Yeah. So that helicopter's all ready to go. Um, I've already mocked up and cut out all the Nitro cutouts for the canopy so i am rocking the electric blue and yellow canopy with the yellow and blue boom as the 580 nitro now so I'll, i'm curious to see how that's gonna look in the air um there's a bunch of stuff i shipped out to ian so that's on on the way you should get that yep. by this friday i believe um, so yep nice uh today I got the 580 raw electric with uh, the blades I ordered. So I got two sets of the S700 um, SAB blades to give it a try. So can't wait for that. And I do have one last thing. Um, you know, I've been with BK Servos for for pretty much, I think, like six or seven years now. Mm-hmm. And so I'm officially stepping down from BK as a... I don't know, field rep or team pilot or whatever I was for BK. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I want to give a huge shout out to Bert, Ron, Kyle. Like, I'm still part of Switch Rotorblades, but just on the servo side, I've, um, I, you know, there's all these brands out there now and all these new things that I want to try. So, you know, I didn't, I feel like it wasn't, I couldn't try these things while being on the team, you know, even though I could have done it behind the scenes and no one care, but I just, I didn't feel right testing out someone else's and buying other people's products, um, being a team pilot on a, another servo brand. So, so yeah, I announced that, uh, I, you know, stepped down from being on a BK servos. So I am trying out some new stuff on the servo side. I'm excited to, to give it a try and, you know, see, so you'll be seeing some new posts with new things out there for me. Cool. Right cool, on, man. Dude. Well, that was a lot. God, I got to cut lot. these down to like three bullet points instead of six. Hey, I did have a lot going on this. I did have a lot going on. Yeah, I'm going to have that raw flying tomorrow, man. I'm going to meet that shit tomorrow. <laughs> All right, let's go into the main topic here. What do we got? Review series, huh? Review series. Volume I guess it's well, a, yeah, it's, like it's kind of a review. These. It's more of a comparison, but yeah. Yeah, but it's part of the review series that we have. Um, right. But it is it is a comparison, and with that comparison, we're gonna give a huge disclosure, huge disclosure. So listen up, everyone. This is completely our bias opinion. I'm gonna. No, say. that's not true. Okay, it's not. It's not we're biased, biased opinion. <laughs> no. It's not. We we did the best we can, but it's yes. not like we used lab uh, equipment to test all this shit. Yeah. We tested it with hobby grade testers and mm-hmm. did our flights and stuff yep. but 
I wouldn't say it's biased at all. No, no, I'm joking with that. The the other thing I would want to say is that um um Andy and I both did testing of these batteries um separately. So obviously like how he pushes a battery and how I push the batteries may be different. Um you know, his flights versus my flights are definitely gonna be different. We did um have the same type of tester and Andy will go over Yeah, the, I'll yeah, let me just speak on that real quick. Yeah. I use we use the uh, the Rev Electrics IR tester. You can still get it in some places. I know Rev Electrics is out of business now, but I found this thing in stock in a few places. I got two of them, so I checked the same battery with each tester to kind of see if they were because a lot of these IR testers can vary. Like they'll be mm-hmm. consistent within itself, but if you use this tester and then you go use a different tester, it, you could get totally different numbers. So I got two testers, checked them with a the battery. They were very, very close. So I would say within 0.02 milliohms or 20 okay. pico ohms. I think that's right. So very, 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 very close. And I I did that several times to kind of get a a baseline. And then I shipped one of them out to Steve. So our number, while yes, our flying styles are a little bit different, but we also sometimes will do an easy flight. Sometimes we'll do a hard flight. You know, I can push batteries pretty good and I I mix it up a little bit. So, you know, all things considered, it's not an unreasonable way to do it. It, I mean, it's not as good as doing them in a lab setting or something with no, a load. No. Right. But it's real world conditions. Yep. Real yeah, world I condition was, and we did our best, obviously, like you mentioned. So And I was gonna add, it sounds to me like you guys did a well rounded like overall review, not a lab test review or a comparison mm-hmm. based on what like the average hobbyist is gonna have and what he's gonna yep. you know, experience. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Um, one um, of the things I want to mention is that, um, you know, we're going to go over this. The, the comparison is going to go over basically after the IRs and what we saw as, as the ratings after three break-in cycles that we've done each on our chargers. And then and then we did a 10 and then a 20 flight um, meeting. Yeah. Yeah. We checked them new. Mm-hmm. We checked them after three break-in cycles and then after 10 flights and then 20 flights. Yeah. Now okay. I do have more flights than that on sub- several of these packs. Um, I'm in the 30 somethings on each of these packs, but yeah. I think uh, 20 was a good enough, you know. Count. Yeah, me as well. And I just checked. Mine haven't changed much yeah, from much 20 to 30. It's very, okay. very little difference. So. All right. Okay. So, yeah. Remember, these are our opinions and these are our findings. Um, if you don't like them, oh, well, okay. <laughs> I would suggest buy batteries and check them yourself. Yeah. Like, yeah. Seriously. Now our findings when we did this could be completely different than yes. your own. So yes. And another disclaimer, um, the batteries we got are the batteries we got. Like, I don't know if I might've gotten a bad cell or might've gotten a good cell or vice versa. Like we just don't yeah, know. That- that's you know. another thing. To to have really done this the best way, we would have got like several six, eight, ten of each brand. Yeah. But yeah, Steve didn't want to loan me the money to buy them, and he wouldn't buy them for me. So I just couldn't bankroll that. After I bought the Pulse Pack, <laughs> let's talk about these packs. So come on. Yeah, but <laughs> even though you guys are it. saying all that, you know. When I watch a review on PC products or anything like that, you know, sometimes these companies are shipping these items out to these YouTubers that they know are reviewing them and they still get shit wrong. That's a good point as well, Kevin. These were all just bought from hobby stores randomly. Right. None of these were shipped to us for review purposes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's a good point too. Yes. Okay. So Kevin. Ian, ask away. What do you guys want to know? So I want to know what brands you guys tested. Okay. Let's go down the list. So we have Maniacs. We have Gen Zace. 
We have, we have two different maniacs. Yes. Actually. Two, yes. Thank you for for saying that. We have the blue 45C maniacs. 5,000 5, million uh, power. And we have the um, the red 70C 5100 milliamps. And just an asterisk, little, milliamp per hour. Yeah, just a little asterisk um, about these 5100s. Um, these are no longer. I don't think you can get these packs anymore. They're they have a okay. new cell version of the 5100 70Cs. So things like the weight and the size dimensions are going to be um, different be than what you can get now. Yeah. yeah so. Okay. So this is at the time that we bought these packs, and we'll go over it. Um, we bought these packs all around the same time, at basically at the middle of February to middle of March. We purchased these all these batteries. Mm -hmm. um, so again, we'll Last just go year. down the list here. Yep, in 2021, the Maniac Success 5045Cs. We have two of those packs. We had a single Gen Zace Success 5060C pack. Um, we have these are now stick packs here, or for for the next three. So we had a Pulse 12S 5070C stick pack, a fully max 12S 5000 milliamp um, 70C stick pack, and then a Maniacs 12 uh, 12S 5100 milliamp 70C pack. Milliamp hours, Steve. Milliamp hours, yes. But everyone knows. I don't know why everybody hours, calls milliamp. it milliamps. Milliamp hours is a capacity measurement, not milliamps. Right. Ma. I'll do it even worse. Ma. No, don't do that. I'll punch okay. you through. 5,000 Ma. 5,000 Ma, and I'm saying. I heard ma. somebody do that on a review one time, and I, yeah. I hated them. Okay. Come on. How about, no, no, wait. Sorry. It's Ma. Ma. Ha. Ma. 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 <laughs> because the A is. <laughs> Anyways, million of hours, yes, yes. All right. I'm That's saying meh to ma. all that. Meh. <laughs> um. <laughs> all right. So, so. We already covered what you guys used to yeah. test the the data. Yes. There was another question I, I was going to have in regards to the battery itself, but uh, I forgot it now after all Wait, that gibberish. Wait, did we get through all the batteries, or did I distract Steve? I think I the last one we didn't get through. The last one was HRBs, Success 5050 oh, okay. C-Packs. And these are and the, the non-graphene. These were the great. Yes. These like are the, the non-graphene, the AKA Amazon packs, yes. That, mm -hmm. that a lot of people know them by that. So I know what I wanted to ask. Did you guys just take them out of the pack, charge them up, and fly them, or did you do a break in on all the batteries, or how did you guys yeah, do you it? Listen. Yeah, no, if did you, you rewind the show about five minutes, you'll hear <laughs> how we did. Uh, yes. We huh. tested them out of the pack. We did three cycle break in. Then we'd test them after 10 flights and after 20 flights. Oh, okay. Nice. But I mean, but I guess what I'm, what I wanted to ask was like, was the break in, the break in cycles is that done on on the charger the, on, on your the charger? charger? Okay, charger. Okay, yeah, not in real life, not fly. Okay, that's that's what I wanted to ask, in a roundabout way. <laughs> okay. So, let me ask you, how you tested these things? Did you go out, like, did you do, uh, like, how did you test them? Do hardcore three D? Did you? Put around so, a mix, they, just normal yeah, flies. Just do your normal flying. I did my right, normal so flying. Yeah. Average hobby guy testing, sort of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Which is good though, because I, I mean, if you give these to a Kyle Stacy, you know, that could have different effects on some of the batteries, obviously. Right. Definitely. They they'll you know? definitely you know hit the packs harder. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And for me, and I, I assume Steve probably as well, some flights were, I'm not going to say high head speed, but higher head speed, more aggressive. You know, I, yeah. I would push them some flights, but then some flights they wouldn't be. You know, I would be doing something else or could be doing some different hover practice or a bunch of autos or, or stuff like that. So I kind of mixed it up a little bit. Okay. I'll be honest with mine. It depends if I want to get out of there or not. <laughs> So sometimes it'd be like a bank two flight, you know, 1800, 18, you know, 20, nice and, you know, good head speed to, to practice stuff, collective stuff, do all that stuff. But there'll be times where like, it'll be late in the day at the field and, you know, like I've done a lot of nitro flying and I just have these couple of batteries left and I'll just go straight to bank three, wah, 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 just beat the packs as yeah, quick sure. as I can. 
it'll go down to 20 percent, and i'm like okay that's good enough for storage and all oh you know and mm-hmm. the flight so and those are like three minute flights but that's um, still a mix i mean you don't do sure, that every yeah. time no well, for sure yeah so okay. right on so um how were the batteries stored i mean did you keep an eye on like temps uh as far as storing them Yeah, miners put on storage charge and then kept in the house. So, yeah, so 69, different. 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm different. I storm in the garage and it's not insulated. So, it is whatever, it is close to outside temperature. You know, obviously, there's no wind chill and things like that. But um, I don't, I storm at storage charge, so three, you know, 3.85, but I don't store temp wise in the house. Now, for the testing, though, I did bring them in the house and give them a day or two to get to um, acclimated, get it acclimated into room temperature. And we just test, tested across the board, all of them at storage charge. So yeah. all the IR testing. Three, 3.85 okay. per cell at 69 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes. Yes. That was consistent because that can make a huge difference in your readings. Oh, absolutely. Yes. So we both tried to be the same with that. Okay. Next question. So or should we go over some numbers? Yeah, I was going to say, let's go over some numbers. I think we got a pretty good baseline on how you guys okay. tested. So one of the first things I want to point out is the price of, uh, of these batteries. I think, yes. I think um, the price point is a factor that people need to consider when they're buying batteries. Absolutely. Right? So, so um, kind of, Shouting out the most expensive and the least expensive. Um, I have to divide this by two here. Hold on a second. So the Pulse was the most expensive pack. Um, that came out at, uh, let's see here, $174.50 per 6S pack. Per 6S pack, yeah. yeah. So it was $349 for the stick pack. Or if we break it down to a single 6S pack, is $174.50. Mm-hmm. Um, the least expensive, which I'm sure people listening to this who uh, yeah, obvious Amazon packs, are the HRB 6S 5000 milliamp per hour 50C mm-hmm. packs. Um, these are the ones that, like, I don't know if you have them. Do you have the packs in front of you? Can you show? I do. For the folks that can check it out on uh, on our um, YouTube page, you'll see these are the standard silver um, wrapping with they the got straps on them, but you can tell yeah. what they are. Yeah, um, they're the, the, the normal ones you get from Amazon. They're you know, so they're sixty nine ninety nine per six S pack, seven dollars. So $70. for the pair, it's one hundred and forty dollars for a twelve S six S five thousand milliamp per hour pack. Wow. Okay. And then, you know, you have your middle of the grounds, which are, I would say, like the Maniacs 45C. Um, it's probably around that middle ground where you're yeah, paying like, about 100, oh. 120 per pack, right? Mm-hmm. Per pack, 240 for a pair or a stick pack. Yeah. Um, the Gen Ace was 124, well, 125. Mm-hmm. The Fully Max was 222, so that's 111. 11 yeah so that's that was pretty cheap too that's pretty reasonable yeah yeah. and the maniacs the 50 the 70c 5100 milliamp hour was 275 so what would that be for a pair for a stick pack it's uh 137.50 yeah 137.50 yeah so a a little range there they yeah seem like they all kind of run in that 120 to one 40 range, I would say, with the mm-hmm. Pulse being a little more and the HRB being obviously like <laughs> half price, but... Yeah. Mm. Half price, but did it give you half the performance? I don't know. We'll find out. So we kind of talked about the cost, but what about the weight? Yeah, weight is very important to me, and it should be important to you if you're listening to this. 
because I don't know anything that can, well, I would shouldn't say anything. Weight of your batteries in your heli affects the weight of your heli probably as much as anything else. Like you can use a lighter, lighter days, battery yeah. and cut a lot of weight out yeah. or use a heavy pack and add a lot of weight. Yep. Depending on what you're doing. Yeah, I would like say you can go with like more, more so mini servo and it wouldn't give you that much weight savings. Compared right. To a battery and then choice. of course, you know, a large ESC, a large motor mm -hmm. would affect it as well. But battery weight seems to be a lot of difference, but not all what, but sometimes the same or very close to the same performance. Yes. Whereas if you use a larger ESC or a larger motor, you obviously get more performance for that weight. But sometimes a super heavy battery doesn't give you more performance than a yeah. light or medium weight battery. Right. And it makes a big difference. I mean, like half a pound or a pound, even in certain cases. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's go over the heaviest pack. Now. Mm -hmm. You know, asterisks on this one, like I said, the Maniacs 5170C packs um, at the time, these were, they're noticeably bigger and they're noticeably heavier than any other 12S pack um, that we tested. Um, you know, it's, it's a considerable taller pack compared to the other packs. Like, you know, there's, there's, it's a lot of differences that you can kind of see right off the bat when you're looking at these packs. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. yeah, that's a big difference. And I'm trying to keep it level as possible, but like you can tell that the the maniacs are definitely um, taller, you know. And I mean, I we will talk about the weights, but the. So the weight of. Um, the maniac single like a single cell pack is 890 grams. Now. I don't know what that means to me, like 90, okay. But if you're compared to the lightest 31 pack, ounces, yeah. Yeah, I was um, actually working on the difference here, and then I got distracted. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the lightest when, ones. So when you look at the lightest one that we weighed out, what's the Gen Z 6S5060C at 709 grams. So almost 180 grams lighter. That's a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. It's a is. noticeable difference in flight, especially. Yeah. So that would be, let's see, 362 grams. Okay. That's 12.77 ounces for two batteries, like a 12S setup. Hmm? I mean, that's three quarters of a pound. Yeah. Three quarters of a pound. Wow. wow. Big difference. That's a lot of weight. Right. So yep. now. Yes. <laughs> Now, most of these batteries, um, that is the far extremes, right? The heaviest and the lightest. Now, the most medium packs, they're weighed about, the, they look like 735 to 790 um, grams. Yeah, I'm going to say most of these are, like here, 793, 789, 790, 791. Right. They're in that 790 you know. range. You know, maybe a little bit right. less, but that, that HRB is a little bit less, but, you know. Yeah. Well, I was saying the HRB is the lightest and the other one's the heaviest, but all the rest of them fall in that 890, yeah. 888 range. Yeah. I mean, 790, 788 range. Right. right. So about 100 grams different. What's 100 grams mm -hmm. in, in, you know, not mentioned? America. <laughs> in America. In America. In Imperial. That's 3.5 ounces. Okay. So, but... Oh times two that's seven ounces yeah so almost like basically like a little less than almost half a pound right? almost half a pound yeah wow almost half a pound right so think about our helicopters when we're talking about like oh it's 12 and a half pounds to 13 pounds <laughs> you don't want to be flying a 13 pound and you wouldn't be flying that 12 and a half pound like, right right, right? Mm -hmm. so batteries can make a huge difference on that or it can be a 12 pound and you bring it down to 11 and a half mm, yeah you know i mean it, do what it, i did it really makes a huge difference yeah, I got to see what that. I got to look up my um, the picture of the ADA setup because I weighed that to see the the milli, the the weight of that. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm curious how it stacks up to these batteries. I know it's definitely been uh, 
it's definitely light. Like if it's as light as the 7S pack that I have, which is incredible. I'll go look that up while we uh, talk about the next big one. So yeah. All right. IRs, right? This is what people want to yeah. know. Yeah. And, um, you know, there's different thoughts on this. As far as I'm concerned, the IR of the sales is one of the, I don't know if it's the best, but definitely the easiest way to measure. Probably the best. The lower the IR, the higher the pack performs. I mean, higher at least in, in my test, yes, the higher, the more amps you can draw from the pack before bringing it down to low voltage. Yep. So a lower IR is better. And this isn't, this is, I don't even know exactly how to explain it all. It's not, you can't take a multimeter and just check the resistance from one cell to the other. No. There's math involved and... Uh -huh. algorithms and all kinds of shit that I'm too stupid to understand. So you got to use a tester. <laughs> you have to use a tester specifically that can do this. Now, um, a lot of people will, so a lot of people will say, well, what about the IRs I get on my charger? You know, I'm charging and I, it gets fully charged up and then I can go and look at the IRs, right? What all about right. those IRs? Okay, that is useful data to compare your packs to see if maybe you have a cell that starts getting like really high. Mm -hmm. But in my experience, that is, does not equate well to the true C rating of the pack. Yes. Because when it's charging, you're flowing current through there, you're heating up the cells. Yep. So it Some measures are going. Yep. considerably lower in my experience. Yeah. So depending on the charger, I know my old iCharger 42, what is it 4010 duo mm -hmm. you could plug a pack in it's on storage charge you know room temperature you could hold a button or two buttons and it would do an hour test that i found pretty accurate oh, it didn't always me match some of these other meters mm -hmm. but it was consistent okay um but but uh testing it while it's charging i found to be like okay to see oh wow that cell is Bad or three, bad. yeah, three milli milliohms higher than the rest. There's a problem. That's good and that's useful data. But as far as saying, well, this whole pack is, you know, these are testing, you know, 2.5 milliohms, then it should be, you know, whatever C rating, which we're going to get to next. I don't find that super consistent or very useful unless you can check it without it being charged. Yeah. That makes sense. So basically saying that when you're charging a battery, it's chemical reactions are happening, it's heating up, there's mm -hmm. flow of electricity. So it skews those numbers. Mm -hmm. So especially like Rev Electrics, right? Because that's the charger I, I'm familiar with. That's while the charger charging, I, use, I use now, yes. Mm -hmm. So I'm charging, while I'm charging, I'm like, Deek! and it's like, okay, I can look at the IRs, right? I can scroll to that next menu and I can look at the IRs and I see they're all like, one point something, One, they're super yeah, low and everything, really especially low. for, for 5,000 6S mm -hmm. packs, right? Let's not get confused with, you know, three, 2S, 2,500s, they will, mm -hmm. the IRs will be way higher, like 30, 20, 30. But, um, so, so these are the IRs that we got and, and how do we get the true C rating? Let's kind of discuss that before okay, we get the, into the, it. Yeah, I use a, um. There's a formula, and unfortunately, I didn't get the formula. I asked around, nobody knew, and I was too lazy to like start emailing people to really get it. Yeah. But there's a there's an online tool in at least two different places where you can punch your numbers in, and it will spit out the the max current rating or the the C rating. The first one is jj604.com. Lipo tool and then if you go to soko heli tool he has a calculator page on his website that you can punch this stuff in as well you need your capacity your cell count your hour reading of your sales and calculating the issues whichever sells the highest so if you have five of them that are 
1.8 and one of them's 2.2, you would punch in 2.2 in that instance. Because that's as much, you, you kind of go by the, the lowest yeah. sale. Yeah. Or the highest so sale. The weakest link IR, in your sale. The weakest link, yes. Right. It's going to be your best performing pack. Or the best, yep. to, or the best that the pack can perform. Yes. So that's what I what I use to figure this. And it's it could be a little on the conservative side. In my opinion, you can use this rating. You can pull this, whatever it tells you, you can pull this amount of current through this pack without damage. You can, could you pull more for a short time? Yeah. Yes, possibly. Rush, depending yeah. on the temperature. Will it shorten the life of the pack? Possibly. Probably. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, we don't know. Um, so <laughs> I don't. I know we're saying we don't know a whole lot, but batteries are complicated. Yeah. They are. Yeah. All this stuff is really complicated, and and we're looking at numbers, like a whole bunch of numbers, and uh, we'll we'll post these numbers so people can see them. We'll post screenshots of this yeah. uh, Google Doc here. So you can see what our ratings were after three breaking cycles, after 10 and, and 20. And, mm -hmm. you know, at the very least, it helps us show the differences, right? Like yeah, how it can range so varying from manufacturers and, I guess, quality control. Right. right. Yeah, I, th I think everyone knows that the C rating printed on your battery means pretty much absolutely jack shit. Yeah, total BS. It might be useful in a brand. So if a brand has a, mm -hmm. a 40C and a 60C, usually the 60C will be better. Will it be 20C better? No. Oh. But it might be some better. But if brand A has a 60C pack and brand B has a 60C pack, who the fuck knows? One yeah. could be way better than the other one. Yes. There's really no standard to this. It's just kind of whatever yeah. they decide to print or whatever method they use to test, which could That's be it. a million different ways. It's a, the method that they use to test can be widely varying from manufacturer to manufacturer. Right. Some test at the cell, some test at the, you know, beyond the cell, basically. Yeah, they may be testing to destruction. They may be, de you know, depending yeah. on the load. The, the, there's a million right. factors that go into yeah. play. Um, but what this is really, really, really useful for is if you measure these IRs and you have two packs, one from brand A and one from brand B, and you measure the IR, you punch it in this website mm -hmm. calculator, that will tell you which one's better. Yeah. I mean, that it's, it's pretty consistent with that. Yeah. Okay. So let's go over a couple of these. Yeah. How do we want to um, do it? Let's just grind down through them real quick, um, all right. through all of them, because I think this is what people want to know. Yeah. And then we'll hit, or do you want to hit the f highest and lowest first? Okay, let's let's hit the let's hit the highest and lowest, just because it's interesting um, what the true C rating of the highest and then what true C of the lowest yeah. we've calculated. Well, I wonder what, well, it doesn't matter. I was going to say, I wonder what Kevin and Ian would think was the highest and lowest, but. Oh, that's a good question, though. It, it's hard to, yeah. You guys have any thoughts? I think they uh, fell asleep. I would kind of think that the pulse would be in the higher. In you, the you're, talking, you're talking about the true C rating? Does it have the true C rating? As far as it's, mm -hmm. what it's branded. Mm -hmm. And I would kind of think, and I haven't really looked through the data, only because I, I, don't have much experience with them. The maybe the fully max is the is the one that's off more. I don't know. Okay. That's my guess. Yeah. If I didn't have anything to go by, I would say the the most ex well, I would say the heaviest ones the highest and the lightest ones the lowest. <laughs> yeah. Because that's been my experience. The heavier they are, usually the lower the IR reading, which equals higher true C rating. And if anybody doesn't know the C rating is the amount of current that can be pulled out of a pack without right. damaging it. So, for example, a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, that equates to 5 amps. If it has a 20 C rating, you should be able to pull 100 amps out of that 
without causing it damage, without shorting shortening its life unduly. Right. Right. Excessively. You, yeah. Excessively. Yes. Does that mean you could pull 300 amps out of it for a second and a half? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't say you can't. You if like you pull it. 200 amps out or 200 amps out of it for two minutes. Yeah, you may uh, you may hurt the pack. Be dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you you could hurt it for sure. Or it may not hurt it, but you may only get 50 flights before it really degrades instead of 200 or 150 or whatever you'd normally get. Um all right, let's go over the the name of the pack and the approximate per cell IRs that we pulled. And then we'll talk about the advertised C rating and the true C rating. What we no, okay. And we're going to do this at the three cycle mark. We'll do three cycles and then we're going to. This is after the break Sorry. in. Yes, the three cycle break ins. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Because do we have true C ratings for the rest or we have to count? No. Them? Or is that enough? I think that's enough. And then we'll just talk about how much to see the hours went up or down yeah. right after 10 Change. and 20. Yeah, basically this this old column okay should have ordered these in lowest to highest i guess we kind of can we can but it's um i mean we can yeah i mean if you want to we can can you just double click on this just go down the list i can just go down the list and sort them okay. by the yeah okay all right so after the three break-in cycles, we did a test. And this is what we're going to, we're going to show what approximate IRs per battery and then what the um, advertised C rating was and what the true C rating that we pulled from the, from our number. So coming in here, um, <clears throat> let's just kind of go down the list or do you want to go from highest to lowest or lowest to highest? Let's go lowest to highest. We can, we don't have to change it. We can, I can look at them here and tell. Yeah. Okay. So the lowest IRs was the Maniacs 12S 5100 70C pack. We did that wrong. I meant to go lowest to highest C rating. Okay. <laughs> Worst to best battery. Let's okay. start over. I'll edit this out. All right. Okay. So after three charger break in cycles, go over the IRs, um, the highest to lowest, which will then prove the lowest C rating to the highest C rating. Okay? Right. And that's a little bit backwards there. But. Um, so in our test with the batteries that we purchased that we got our hands on, um, coming in around 4.25 to 4.4.5 to 4.7. Yeah, 4.63, 4.7. I see. Yeah, we're just reading off a few of the numbers. We're not going to do every sale. Yeah, we're not going to go every sale. We'll just kind of do like the low and high. You guys parts. are probably falling asleep already. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it was the fully max this pack. Uh, the fully max 70C 12S 5000. We were reading anywhere from four and a quarter IRs to 4.7. The next yep. one on the list is pretty close. Well, let's um, do the C rating as we go. Okay, it's going to so, get too confusing. Yeah. So, so at that max, hours, we calculated the true C rating for that pack to be around 16. 15.98, 16.1. Wow. So 16 from an C, of basically, from a 70 C pack. And these are the Amazon ones that you were talking about? No, no. This these is are the fully, the fully max. max. These are the fully max ones. Okay. Wow. Okay. So going down the list now, um, Gen Z 6S 5000. This is the 60C pack, um, mm -hmm. one of the lightest packs, but we were averaging about 3.8 to 4.25 milliohms per cell, mm -hmm. which advertised C rating was 60, but the true C rating we were getting 16.8. Yeah, 16.8. Wow. Okay. That was a. Yeah. Um, the next ones are kind of close. Uh, we're going to go with, I think, the Pulse pack next. Mm -hmm. Coming in um, around 
six to two point seven. Now one mm-hmm. now one thing that I want to note about these pulse packs is the cell matching was very good. Mm-hmm. Um, the delta okay. between the cells are very good. Yeah, we did measure that as well. Yes. Yeah. Now it's very good, but two point seven, two point seven. Let's just say a nominal two point seven milliohms. Um, Andy. Yeah, 2.76 was the highest one. So one of the batteries was 20.81 and one was 20.85. Yeah. So So it's a 20 C pack. 20 C pack. But 20.85 and 20.81, they're very, very matched. So that is one thing that's good to note out. Yes, Mm -hmm. that's two different packs in a six. Well, here, I'll show you the pack. So it's this pack. It's a 12S, the two 6S packs in here. And for them to match not just the cells, but then the actual packs shows good build quality, right? Like it shows, you know, some effort in the quality control and, and their matching. Okay. That's awesome. Okay. Um, and then taking the lead from that a little bit is the HRB Amazon packs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The wow. cheapest packs, um, one of the lightest packs as well. Coming in around 2.3, 2.29 to 2.45 or 4, 4. Yeah. Damn. 20, yeah. 21.96 C and 22.05. Now, remember, they advertise 50 C, and they're getting about a little less than half, mm-hmm. which is way better than when you advertise 70 C and you're getting in the 15, 16. Right. Yeah. You know, 20. Like almost you know? a third. Yeah. 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 Eyes. Right. Like, huh. Interesting. Right. So these packs, the Pulse and the HRBs, are neck and neck as far as performance. Right. We're talking about 20.85. Yeah, the HRB is actually a little better. <laughs> a little bit better. Right. That's fr- now, this is startling data. It, well, to me. it's actually considerably better because of, of all these packs, we we don't have a like a five C delta on all these. I mean it's yeah. right. From the best of the worst is not as big a difference when you actually go to the true C rating. Yes. But that can make a pretty significant difference in your amp trawl capabilities. Yeah. Capability. I just want to say this, you know, 0.5 or, or one point something on the true C rating is a significant difference. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then let's see here. And then coming in the lead. So now these last two packs are both Maniacs packs. Um, the 45C packs are averaging on about 1.8, 1.84 yeah, I'd say 1. to 1.9 to 2.0 yeah. something. Yeah, 2.8 to 2.1. 2. 2. Yep. Um, so in that high, you know, ones, low two IRs, mm-hmm. and what did they come in at? True C rating for one of the packs was 23.85, and the other one was 24.31. So 45C advertised. That's a pretty considerable difference between, you know, the 20, call it 22, and then the 24. Yeah, right. And then coming in the lead, um, not surprisingly, just because of what Andy said about weight and just the the sizes of the cells usually will give you better performance, is the Maniac 70C 5100s, this, this monster pack that literally weighs three quarters of a pound more than right. most batteries, right? <laughs> um, comes in at around a 1.8, low 1.9. I mean, there's even 1.67 I see, 1.69 I see here. Mm-hmm. The 1.6 to 1.9, you know, IRs. And right. what's the true C rating Which it on gives that? us 21.95 and 25.29. Oh, no, no, 24.9. 24.95. Yes. Yeah. Okay. 25.29. Yes. I thought you said 21 for some reason. Sorry. No. Which again is a, is a, well, here's the other thing. So mm-hmm. we got what we call those around 25 average, both those together, maybe 25.1. Yeah. yeah. And the other ones, I'm going to call them around 24, 24. average. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not as big a difference. Right. When you go look at the weight. Yes. The weight and of the, the 45C is yes. 790 mm-hmm. versus 890. 100 grams difference. 100 grams. 
right. per, per pack, sorry, per, uh, per, per, pack. per pack, which as we already spoke is a considerable difference. Yep. And, Damn. and the price of the, you know, price the is different are, as well. It's a not, little bit different, not much. What's it, 35 yeah, bucks? Yeah. Uh, it's, let's see, 120 for the 45C. And well, 240, let's just say, right? 240 and then yeah, 240 versus two. Yeah. So like 15 bucks a pack mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. So it's not, it's an, I would say almost insignificant price difference, but, but the, the weight, weight, holy Oof. shit, the weight's yeah. a huge difference. So yeah. now a lot of people are yelling at the radio or whatever they listen to the podcast on saying, well, this is only after a break in or, you know, three mm -hmm. charges. So, so I'm guessing that's why you guys recorded more data after 10, 10 and flights, 20 flights and yeah. 20. Yeah. But um, we're not going to do the true C ratings. We'll, we'll talk about the delta differences between the three charges to the 10 flights and then, then the 20 flights. But overall, the biggest difference that um, in the lowest to highest C rating is, is quite astonishing. You know, the 1598 for fully max to the highest C of 25.29, so almost 10 C difference. Yeah, it should be 50 Ooh. amps on a 5,000 milliamp hour pack. So to get, to give you an idea, let's... Uh, I'm going to have to check my Gen Z's packs. I have two that I run on the Oxy-5, and I have been enjoying them. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little so test on mine. I would say, so the 25 True C, which remember this is conservative and it says you can pull this without damaging or shortening the life 25c true pack on a 5000 milliamp hour would be 125 amps some okay. of you're saying wow that's super low that's a continuous continuous load, draw you yeah. know right if you go to 200 but you're only there for half a second you know no big deal versus our lowest one was what like 15.9 17 16C, let's say. So uh, it, well, yeah, or just call it, yeah, 16C, 16 times five, that's 80 amps. So 40 amp difference. 40, 45 amp difference. And that's some of you may think, well, well, that's not enough to matter. Depending yeah. on your flight, you know, yeah. there's a lot of flights where I won't, will barely break 100. So it, it's okay. Now, but. I wonder if folks are thinking like, who cares? <laughs> like whatever, <laughs> I fly these packs and they feel perfectly fine for me. Yeah. And that's great. They do feel perfectly fine. And you know, that's great. Like your flying style doesn't determine that you need, um, you know, a quote unquote 70 C pack. Right. There's no need to, right? Then don't buy it, right? Like don't save your money. Because remember batteries, these are <laughs> our consumables, right? It, no matter how much we look spend. like I can get a 70 C pack anyway. <laughs> No, you can't. No. <laughs> no, you can never. But like I said, those are like rated at the cell, like at the battery, without the terminals, without the leads, without all this extra yeah. crap. And and also, like, like I keep saying, these are kind of conservative. So even though it's a 25C pack and you go out and pull 175, 200 amps on it, mm -hmm. doing speed hurricanes or whatever for, an, you know, yeah, if you do, if you fly Mac, like McGrady, the pack may still perform and feel fine. Where I would say is, okay, how many flights do you get out of that pack? Yes. Do you get 50, Longevity. 60 flights and then it's it's shit, or do you mm -hmm. get 200? Yeah. If you know, it, and that's that's subjective as well. If if you're buying yeah. them, you want to push them hard, and you you don't care that if you get. 75 flights and you're done with yeah, it. Yeah, 100 flights. That's cool. Done. That's, that's completely perfectly fine. Yep. If you're more conservative and you want to try to maximize the life of your pack, then you might be more interested in this. Yeah. Well, and I think this episode and your your data that you guys come up with also opens the door to other, you know, pr uh, products that are out there like. A lot of people might just see Pulse and think that's it, you know, or mm -hmm. never heard of Maniacs or these other ones, the HRBs or, you know, who knows, yeah. you know, where they are in the hobby. Right. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I would say Fully Max, Maniacs, they're all pretty new kids on the block, you know, right. as far as batteries. Um, HRBs, probably the last couple of years, you started really hearing about them, you know. 
Yeah, yeah and so. there's other brands we haven't heard of that may be as good or better than these. Yeah. This is just what was kind of popular and available when we were yes. buying and testing. Yes. And one and thing remember, as far we as... we did this all out of our pocket. <laughs> right. So, you know, no discounts or nothing. We paid all these batteries. I was going to add one thing I always heard about IRs is, and Steve and I used to talk about this, you know, when we're starting out, that you want to have a relative same number between all the cells you know if you come across one the that's balance yeah yeah, yeah. that's that's Match. what we're talking about here as far mm -hmm. as like Matching. what the the, the last number you guys are talking about that's what i was saying like i mean the pulse um even the maniacs like the deltas between right were really low um not yeah, only I, between the really cell, none of these IR. packs were are really hugely different i would say i mean they're all mm, they're all pretty close. not too bad no. I'm just kind of looking through them here. Uh, some are worse than others, but overall, they're not terrible. There's none of them where like one sells 1.5 and the other sells right. three. Or right, three right, three. right. Right, and that's the thing. Like even though that the fully max was all were coming in as as very high IRs per cell, they were all relatively matched though, and that's the big pretty, thing, pretty right? good. It's one of the ones that's the furthest out I'm looking at. It like is. Here's one that's still... four point one versus five nine, so that's pretty good range, but it's still nothing crazy. Yeah. Um. Okay. So after ten flights, right? What did we notice with the IRs? Well, I don't know because we didn't. Uh, we don't have any good way to compare this other than just looking through each one of them. So column O is total deltas, total packs from test. That's packs. total. That's total IR from the tester that we didn't even really. Yeah, but I mean those numbers would be, I guess. I don't know how different they are. You know what I mean? Like, if I tested yeah. this battery pack and then tested the same battery pack again, would that that you know. Yeah, it it should be. But one of the things that I want to note is um, the fully max that came in at that that high 4.2, 4.5 milliohms um, internal resistance went down after 10 flights. Went down a considerable amount. Like, mm -hmm. um, you know, I was reading 3.58 to 3.9 on one pack and you know around that three six to four on another pack so like it was definitely i noticed a better um better irs as that pack broke in more looks like it went way back up though after 20 flights yeah so after 20 flights <laughs> it did kind of go back up and i don't know if maybe that's something with the testing that kind of got skewed or something i don't know it's almost matches the break in ones though. Yeah. So sort of. <laughs> I don't know if the, the ten was a skew. But I read whatever I read I just posted. Like, you know, right. I'm not gonna so if if it is off, it is off. But I did notice that, you know, the fully max looked like they were going down a little bit. Um so did most packs. Most packs they went a little some changes. Yeah. Um down a little after 10 and then most of them start back up after 20 and they're what i'm looking at by 20 they're almost the in. same as their break-in readings or yeah some are a little lower yeah some a little some lower are a little some higher. a little higher <laughs> yeah yeah uh, you know but overall um i think at the 20 flights is when the packs really start settling in and mm -hmm. you know and and it seems like they're very close to like you're saying to our breaking um, IRs. Yeah, I don't see uh, any that like went crazy after like after 20 flights. I don't see any that you know no. doubled in IR or anything. They're yeah. they're basically almost similar to after the three break-in cycles. Yep. And I yeah. would expect them to continue to go up from here. Yeah. So over time, they will definitely go up. The more cycles, it'll eventually slowly creep up. It'll slowly creep up if you don't obviously take care of your batteries. They'll creep up a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I want to note is um, with batteries is the leads, and I, I do want to mm -hmm. make note of this. Um, you can't see it because of the camera. Thing, Put it in front but of your face. There you go. Pulse. 
is way long. They're huge. Now, I did not cut them down. I can't cut them down. I can make them shorter, but I wanted to show yeah. the leads with them um, after I just soldered on the connectors. Okay. On the flip side, when I when now this has been changed, and I did have to resolder this once, I believe. So um, these are even shorter than normal, but the Maniacs was super short. Like it was. Yeah, see, short. that's that's interesting because my Maniacs, but now these are 6S packs. Yeah, and, and not a six. stick pack, but they're they're as long as any other one I've used. I mean, they're standard length, I would say. Yeah, so I think on this, they made them too short, but um, this was feedback that was already given to the company, so obviously it, they changed it when they... This is the HRB. They're, they're about they're the same long. length as well. Okay. The HRB actually has a kind of long balance lead, which mm -hmm. you may or may not like. Yeah. Pulse um, also had a pretty long balance like half of the length of the yeah. actual I don't lead. I don't mind that I would rather it be long and then you can tuck it somewhere and it's easier on the um, charger a short one maybe won't flop around as much but yeah. sometimes you can't tuck it in and it can be difficult to get connected to your charger depending on your leads and all that they're set up yep so yeah there you have it our uh, battery so comparison what, what are your final thoughts on these batteries Steve and then I'll give mine. Sure. So my primary three batteries that I was testing, just to give, um, because obviously um, we tested different, is uh, I tested the Fully Max, the Pulse, and the Maniax 5170C. Um, the Maniax by far had the best punch, the best output. I can totally notice that it had more power and even with the weight, you you can yes. tell it had right. Yes, even with the weight, I noticed it had more power, more punch, but it felt also less battery sag at the later part of the flights. Um, the fully max and the poles, they both felt pretty similar to me. Um, they felt the power dropped off pretty quick after mm -hmm. about two and a half, three minutes in the flight. So as the battery starts to go down in capacity, it just seemed like the the punch wasn't there as much. But, you know, each one of these, like, I asked for it, and it still did what I need to do, right? Like, yeah, I still you can still flew my fly. fly. It's I, not like I it. I still did my collective stuff. Right. I still did everything. But, um, you know, the, the Maniacs, I can, I can go a little bit harder on. And, and I felt that it can, it, it didn't um, degrade on the, the pack's longevity by going so hard, you know, on them. So, um you know, side note, um, after we did the initial, uh, you know, we've done, we've had these results for a while. Um, you know, af after this, you know, <laughs> I ended up joining Maniacs um, because, in my opinion, they were the best batteries. Um, they had a great team, great warranty, and um, their policies as far as, like, you know, if you crash within six months and stuff, they give you some discount and stuff on replacement. So they did have a nice, good customer service aspect of it, too. So good right. job. You know, I, I thought it was very nice, so I joined that team. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, Andy, your thoughts? Uh, yeah, the, I would say, well, okay, the HRBs that yeah, I got so from which Amazon. So three batteries did you test? So I tested the Gen's Ace, the HRBs, and the Maniacs 45C, the blue ones we call them. Yep. I think the blue Maniacs are an excellent battery because they're almost the same mm -hmm. C rating and performance as the red ones, but they weigh considerably less. It cost a few bucks less also, which is nice. Mm -hmm. So that'd probably be my top pick of this whole list of batteries, to be honest. Yep. Um, the HRBs completely surprised the hell out of me. Me too. I was not expecting much the price is i mean is killer yeah. you can literally buy twice as many of these as anything else yep. that being said i have heard of people it's a bit of a gamble mm -hmm. you might get a bad set these two that i got were fine you you know you may have different results which brings me to if customer service is important to you 
the Nisa HRBs are you don't want those because they it, you buy them and that's that. Well, does Amazon back? Can you return through Amazon if you buy them through uh, Amazon? I mean, that's maybe, but I mean, if you if you've had them for three yeah, months, yeah, 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 then I mean, you're not gonna get any help from HRB no. or probably even be able to talk to anyone. No. So if that's important to you you know, maybe look at one of the other brands. Mm-hmm. If it's not, and you're looking for, you know, you're on a budget or something, they're per- the ones that I have here are pretty damn good batteries for super cheap. The performance 75. difference wow. between those and the Maniacs is not considerable. We're talking two mm-hmm. r- true C difference. So it is a difference, but they're also the lightest mm-hmm. and the cheapest. So I was very, very impressed with that. The Gen Ace is not good at all. It's the lightest one we tested, but, but yeah, it, the performance was just not there. One of the worst performance, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Which brings me to another thing I wanted to bring up. Mm-hmm. If you buy, if we went and bought all these exact same batteries today, we could get vastly different results. Yep. For sure. I've had a lot of Gen Ace. They've always been great. They they were light. They performed well. I wouldn't say they were the highest performance ones out there, but the price was reasonable and they were, they were lightweight. This one is by far the worst one I've ever had. You know, I, did it sit in a warehouse for three years or something? Well, I don't right. know. Who knows? I only, only yeah. bought one of them. So if I went and bought five of them, maybe it'd be better. People ask me what batteries to get, and my answer always is, I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) You know, these batteries are, most of them are built in just one or two places in China. So a, a, a brand that is absolutely excellent today may be shitty in a year from now. Who knows? If things change, you never know. Things change. This is kind of a snapshot in time of when we bought these so they may or may not be as good now well i think yeah. that the same could be said for escs and motors you know like uh depends on where it you are be, and what you want to get out of but, them. but batteries it's way more extreme i feel yeah well you know what i mean like uh, where are you in the hobby like are you just starting out do you want do you need something cheap so you could practice your well yeah you know that's, that's or right. are you competing are you like a extreme 3d pilot do you need you know, well, that, that's true as too. I, I mean, are you crashing and destroying yeah. packs yeah. every fifth flight and you you're not yeah, pushing you them that hard? The then, you know, maybe right. the, you know, buy um, eight of the HRBs instead of four of the name, you yeah. know, the more popular right. ones. Yeah. You have more batteries, you know, it's, it's, it's whatever. Um, I really like these blue Maniacs. They're a little heavier. But they perform yeah. really, really well. The best uh, bang for buck, I think. I think they're one of the uh, best values of all the ones we tested. Yeah. But those, bang for the buck and weight wise. Yeah. Now those you've mentioned uh, a certain pack you can't get anymore. Well, the uh, the, the 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 this seventy C pack is the older design, older style. It has been replaced, right? It has been with replaced. Something else. Oh, okay, okay. okay. With, no, with a fifty one hundred milliamp seventy C pack, but it weighs more like your pack. But I mean, it's a different sale configuration and yes. stuff, right? Yes. Yeah. So it's it's not really like we can't compare it. Like so it may weigh pack. it may weigh close to the blue ones, but I don't yet know. Still C-rating. have a little bit better C rating. We don't yeah, know that. We don't know. Just okay. uh, I don't have one to test. So, um, okay. you know. My I mean, advice, like, just buy it. Yeah, right, just go. go try to buy some, you know, yeah. buy a pack, try them. If they're shitty, buy a different brand next time. I mean, yeah. I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> yeah. I know that's, that's not very useful, but that's kind of the way it is. Mm-hmm. Maybe we okay. should have led with that. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're right, though, because I've had the experience with, you know, pulse i've had uh good experience bad experience i've had good with gen zace like you're saying um but look where i am in the hobby like it's fine for me for the weekend stuff i'm doing maybe i I don't see a difference because i'm not pushing them that hard you know right but i think this is very 
like it, for me, uh, you know, it's very insightful as to maniacs and their performance along with HRB. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not on top of stuff. I'm not on heli freak. I'm not on, you know, the hangout. Heli freak. I'm, I'm not on, I'm What's not, that? yeah, I'm I'll not involved there. with, no, I'm just saying I'm not sitting in front of, uh, you know, the social media and I'm not up on stuff every yeah. two seconds of the day, you know? So like, is HRB still in business? I didn't know. You could have said, yeah, they're out of business. I wouldn't have had any idea. You right. know, I've heard of maniacs. Um, I'd like to try them out. I don't think I ever even heard of fully max before this. I, so, I had either. I think so they're I mean, becoming this is good. more popular, which is kind of why I was surprised that they perform so poorly. And, and it could just be the pack that I got. It could be. I could just add a one off pack because I mean, I know people that they say that, you know, they've been flying fully max and they have like drew. Drew has like hundreds of flights on his packs, you know. Mm-hmm. But I don't, yeah. I yeah, don't know. The, the most expensive batteries in our test was next to the last in performance. Next to so. last. Yeah. Mm. Oof. Third. <clears throat> third to last. Yeah. Was it third? Yeah. yeah. Fully, then gens and impulse. Okay. Yeah, I forgot the gens. Yeah. You know, but that's saying something. But it's considerably expensive, more expensive than your S. Yeah. So. Mm. Like considerably more expensive. Not even talking about like the highest. We're not talking lowest. about the ten, fifteen bucks. Yeah, market. we're talking about like two fifty on the average for like the other packs to like three fifty, like a hundred dollars more. Yeah. Fifty dollars a pack. I mean, that's a big difference. Yeah. So. So have we bored everyone to complete tiers yet? Yeah. I feel like we have. I'm bored <laughs> of it already. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move it on. It's a it's a, it's a uh, very I'm complex sorry. topic with a lot of numbers, and we'll post this up somewhere. You can look through it, see if we fucked anything up. Let us know about it. We'll blame it on Ian. Mm-hmm. Why me? And we'll move on. Mm-hmm. Dude, I was doing my my priest there or my uh, pastor impersonation there. Uh, I am sorry for sitting against you, pulse packs. <laughs> <laughs> who is that falwell jerry falwell i don't know i know i'm old i don't know I'm old shit. probably someone from the 80s tired. none of us probably some, of. exactly <laughs> all right before i get all sam kinnison on your ass what are oh, we doing boy. next ian's tech tip ian's oh geez no no <laughs> yeah, that's not a bad kinnison actually yeah no, that yeah. was actually very close all right for uh, this week's tech tip, um, this one was brought to me by uh, Mark Ritchie. And, Wait, um, this isn't Ian's tech tip? It's Mark Ritchie's tech tip? I love yeah. it. it. It's a borrowed tech tip. Um, all right. Uh, he had sent me a, uh, a message on Facebook uh, over the Christmas break, you know, on top of uh, w- wishing me a, a Merry Christmas, of course. Um, he said, uh, hey, got a tech tip for you. When assembling those uh, small thrust bearings in the tail assembly and trying to grease them, it can get very awkward to hold them. Um, What he ended up doing is um, he had taken a drill bit and line it up as, you know, try to get it as close as you can as far as the size of it to like the the feathering shaft so that they slide on there. But uh, he takes a piece of... uh, electrical tape to kind of create kind of a stop to it and you can actually hold the the thrust bearings together on the the actual uh the drill bit the the shank into the drill bit and um you can you can hold them you can grease them and i also found out from uh getting the black nitro together that you can actually insert them into the grip as well um how, how I grease them, I've got, I've actually got a, uh, one of those large syringes filled with uh, marine grease is what I use. And I pretty much did the same thing. I, I found a drill bit that was, uh, you know, to the same size uh, diameter as the inner diameter of the, uh, of the thrust bearings, which was, well, of course, they're going to be the same size feathering shaft, but I, um, uh, uh, I got the the inner races of the bearings. I uh, put a little bit of grease on there, uh, slid the actual 
one of the races down, and then I put the the actual bearing down on that and gave it a few uh, dabs of the the marine grease, and then slide the other half of it on there. Uh, you'll have to go buy the manual as far as uh, which one of the outer races of the bearings has to go first on the actual in the grip. Um, the no, you don't. Put the biggest ID in and the small ID on the outside. Okay. It's always the same. <clears throat> I can never remember, so it's like I, I always go by the manual on that one, so it's just better to be safer than sorry. But um, I just put a little dab on the actual bearings themselves, get them together, and uh, I actually inserted the you know the thrust bearings into the grip by using that method um and it, it it's it worked out pretty good i i did it on the black nitro um i want to say either monday or tuesday i did that so it turned it turned out to be pretty awesome and that was definitely a great tech tip and uh <clears throat> you guys uh have any other tech tips out there you would like to share Hey, shoot me a message, and uh, we'll see if we can't get it on the next show. He's already run out of ideas, so help I him know. out. I'll yeah, I can. I can add to that tech tip also. Oh yeah. What's yeah. That? My cheap advice is, uh, since most of these helicopters are, or all of them are done with the, uh, you know, European or millimeter size everything, get yourself a set of, uh, you know, metric drill bits. I, I tend to use them more often than I thought I was going to use them. Right. Yeah. And they're I, on Amazon. They're dirt cheap. I mean, probably 15 bucks or something. I use the huh. same tool that I use to build these helicopters. What tool is that? This is a tool I use. So I, I put in nine backups if I break it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need nine backups. I need just one. But <laughs> what I do is I put the the smaller inner race, right? The one that goes on the outside in. Yep. Then I put the uh, bearing, and then I grease the crap out of it. And I put the bigger one in, and I take this whole thing, and I put it into the spindle, and I just let it all slide down. And yeah, see, that's this, the way I do it. This keys yeah. into the spindle, right? The tip, yeah. 1.5 millimeter. You can do 1.52 if you want to do, like, uh, 700 bearings, main grips. Doesn't matter. For like for tail bearings, I do 1.5, and this will fit right in, and it'll slide right down. I'll take another thing and just kind of push it down, put the right. bolt on, and call it done. Mm -hmm. um, I like that it flops in here because then when you put it in the thing, it kind of like self-aligns itself into it. And you know, this is something that you have while you're working on heli, so you can just hold it and mm -hmm. do it, put it in. You know, you don't need to have an extra tool to make or or whatever. But yeah, I That's also. I also like to position the first, you know, race as I want to put it in there and then drop it in and watch it flip over to the opposite side 1,000% <laughs> of the time. Oh, yeah, I like you got to install like it backwards and then yeah. it'll flip over the right way. Right, right. No, you think that's what's going to happen, but oh. that's the one time it goes <laughs> it in. No, and you, you guys are over. doing it all wrong. You set the grip or the hub on the table, and then you get back at the other side, and you start throwing them. Throwing. <laughs> you just keep going till you get it. I mean, it's easy. Yeah. Maybe that's why Steve Show's still working on stuff. Maybe he's <laughs> doing these methods. In the, <laughs> on the carpet looking for that damn race. <laughs> Bear races. Oh, yeah. Bear races. Oh. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Very good. Let's, let's move it on then. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Let's move it on. Let's go ahead and move it on. News and announcements. All right, news. And announcements. Got some new Blade helis. You right. guys remember Blade, right? Oh, they still yeah. make helis? They, yep. they, make, they make some toy helis. I mean, some hobby grade helis. They got some new <laughs> smart helis. These are, I don't know, they call them Fusion or... One's a Fusion, one's just a Smart. The 150S Smart Bind and Fly Basic with AS3X and Safe. Which, uh, which dude, should be, like, replaced with, like, yeah and good luck. You know, because on, on these size helis, this shit does almost nothing for me. I don't know. Just it might just be me. I mean, um, the I disagree does. with you completely. Yeah. 
Mm. On these little helis, it's even more important. Yeah. Because th- these are geared toward beginners and, and stuff. So that safe can help someone build their confidence and not yeah. smash it 10 seconds I'm into the flight. You. But I'm not a beginner. I'm an idiot. Well, this ain't for you, dumbass. Yeah. Well, and I won't look at it. <laughs> so you're an advanced pilot. This is ready for in intermediate pilot. Yeah. But the, um, the most breaking news of these whole things, there's a 150S and a Fusion yeah. 180. If you pre-order today, you get a free blade hat. <gasps> what? No way. Yeah. While supplies last, you get a hat. So Snap don't back. delay. And if you look at this hat, you can definitely see yourself in it. Because it's like. It's a styling. It's, it's what the kids are wearing. It's that Is it kind cool? of style. It's cool. Let me run through them real quick. The 150S first sells for $229.99. So $230. Bucks. It's a fully assembled 155 millimeter composite plastic main rotor blades. 65 millimeter tail blades. It has a Spectrum AR6250 or the 6250 MHX fly barless controller and receiver. It's got little bitty mic- Metal Gear Micro Heli servos. So that's kind of nice. They went away from those little linear piece of crap oh. that they used to have. Yeah. You breathe on them, they break. Yeah. So, I mean, this, this ain't bad. It'll yeah. probably be good. It um, requires, you know, obviously a six or seven channel transmitter. Flies on a 3S, 400 to 500 milliamp hour battery. Um, it's got safe, you know. So, like I said, while Kevin hates that, you might like it if you're not super confident. You can practice with this, auto level, all that kind of stuff, panic recovery mode. Oh, I'm God. not saying I hate it. You just saying. said you hate it. <laughs> no, I did not you just say just went I on hate a big, it. long, old man rant about I how said, you hate it. <laughs> I said that at this size helicopter, it's really not going to help me because it's so damn fast. This size helicopter is not going to do anything for you anyway because you're too damn old to see it. Right, this exactly. This is for young people. It's I not. need to fly this through a glasses filled with jello so I can see it. So it slows you know, down. Giant <laughs> Inspector Clouseau magnifying glasses to watch it through. All right. I thought the Fusion series was like their build series. So the Fusion, let's go to it. The Fusion 180. Yeah. Now this one I hate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. No. We I don't had, know. I range. think Fusion just means it's like the higher end. This one sells for 280 bucks. Again, it's factory assembled. It's got what 180 millimeter blades. Does it say anywhere? I don't know. Yeah, the tradition it, it flies on a 4S 450 milliamp hour battery. It's got the uh, sub micro digital metal geared heli servos, 15 amp ESC. It's got the 6250 MHX fly barless controller. You know, it's a 180. You know what's a, uh, kind of getting my attention though on both of these models is the batteries, the this, the the S size on the belt, both both of these, like the small 150s, a 3S. This is a 4S, 180. Yeah, that's uh, that's gonna be pretty beefy, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's gonna have some good power, but I don't know. For those 30 seconds. No, I'm sure. Them. I'm sure it's probably better than 30 seconds. But you do get a hat with this one too for yeah. free. Yep. Like the hat. I don't know. I see this as a step up. I don't know what the 150 is for really, but I see the 180 is probably a step up from like a 230. This well, is... the 180's belt-driven tail too. I remember the 180 that Steve and I both had was torque tube back in the day. This seems, and that was definitely not 4s. Yeah. Uh, L3. Yeah. Well, well, I guess what I'm getting at is if you're get a 230, I don't do they even still have the 230 and you're learning yeah, and you, you get they do. confident with it, flying it around. I mean, this could be a step <clears> up. <throat> still use the, your spectrum transmitter. The, still has the safe if you yeah. you know panic and need it. 
it's, it's going to be a little more performance. It's definitely what I see this for is like people who do Biden fly planes want to get into helicopters, you know, the 230, the 180, the, even the 150 and the smaller ones. They're all, I think, trying to introduce helicopters to either new people or to airplane folks. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you're a spectrum yeah. guy and you've got a bunch of foamies and yeah. you're getting into it, I mean, it makes sense. You buy this 280 bucks and you're, you can fly, get a battery. You don't have to build anything. You don't have to try to learn how to set it up or none of that yeah. stuff. And that's the so, hard part. It's building. That, I up, think right? there's still a market for these. I, don't I know. do think so too. Yeah. They still have the 230, Andy, and it's now they have a, instead of V2, they have a, like a V3. It's called the smart. Blind okay, cool. You've had that yeah. for. Nice. I'm glad they still have that. That was a very good beginner. Really. And that's 250. That one. I mean, I, I don't know. I would still would think. I yeah, would but this is more performant one. than. Uh, the no, that's true. Yeah, with the belt driven tail, and yeah, that's more like a yeah. yeah. True. So. Yep. If you're into blade helis, go check it out. Yep. All right. What else we got? That's it. That's it. That's it. All right, let's move it on. What's next for you in the hobby? What's next for you, Andy? Sim some more. I might fly. We got snow on the ground right now, so I don't know. It'll probably melt tomorrow. Uh, I mean, I could say I'm going to build something, but you know, I don't want to get your hopes up, so I'll just say I'm going to try to sim more and maybe fly something this week. That's Don't you it. have a couple of new kits you could build? Yeah, a couple, three, four, <clears throat> five, half dozen. Oh, boy. It's a hobby shop worth, you know. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, well, I, I don't want to, you know, get compared to Steve Shaw, so I'm not going to say that mm. they're almost ready or I'm Very doing anything. Person. I'm just saying when I get around to it, I'll get around to it. See, where Steve always screws up is he's like, oh, yeah, it's almost ready. Well, You'll see it, see it soon. See it soon. It's almost done. <laughs> Nice. Okay. How about Who's you? Next? Who's next? Me? Yeah, you. Grab uh, fuck. This Jesus. weekend coming up, I got an invitation from Jeff Biter, who's in Sebring, Florida, and nice. I think he flies with Gina and a whole bunch of people out there. Yeah. So if the weather is, you know, accommodating, I'm gonna take a ride out there and do some flying with those. Don't let Frank hear you. Out there. Yeah, I know. Sorry, Frank. <laughs> Frank, I love you, man. Frank, how far is Seabury from you? Don't tell me it's two hours. It's two hours. <laughs> yeah. No, um, yeah, I think two hours. I don't know. No, I think it's an hour actually. Yeah, it's gotta it's be shorter, right? Because Miami yeah. is pretty far down there. So cool. Yes, yeah, slowly branching out from my local area. I'm trying to talk Steve Shaw into making it out there for an appearance. Hmm. So we'll see. It'd be cool. It'd definitely be cool to check out, uh, you know, a different flying field. Yeah. In Florida. Plus, we get to catch up with, you know, Gina. Yeah. And, and Jeff. Yeah. Yep. Cool. What about you, yeah, that's Steve? Awesome. Uh, I got this 580 raw to build. Um, nice. So build that, maiden, try to get some flying um, this weekend. I did. Do some wrenching on the Black Thunder, Black Nitro, sorry, Black Nitro 700 that I forgot to mention. And I forgot to mention this, oh, yeah. I think, um, why I need to wrench on this helicopter. Mm -hmm. um, several weeks ago, I brought it up to the field, and I think it was during, the, during our break, our holiday break. And I was throwing down this awesome flight on it. Like, I was having fun. It was like, kind of like, you know, with the raw, it's just... These goblin nitros, man, they just fly great for me. I love the way they fly. And I was having a great time, and I kind of, like, was doing something, and I kind of, like, reset to, like, just a hover. And I'm like, and I just hear a pop. Like, boop. And I'm like, oh, I just stall. Okay, auto. And I autoed it down. And, you know, no damage or nothing. Didn't even tip over nothing and landed fine. And I'm like, oh, what the hell went wrong? Oh, let me try starting it. And I'm like, it's like, burr, 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 like making really throaty deep down. I'm like, whoa, that, that sounds like I'm full throttle or something, you know, like like the carbs fully open. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the carb fell off. 
Oh, jeez. So, so it's a YS. Ah. YS91 Turek motor. Carbless. The, yeah, carbless. With the power tune and the OS carb. And okay. the power tune has two bolts. And those two bolts went boop. It's just loosened up or whatever. So I it popped. And when it popped, I guess the carb just like, you know, popped. How many carbs oh. have you had come loose in the last couple of years? Just just curious. two, but one was because the motor was. I'm gonna say I was rebuilt with the raw. I think of at least three, right? It was all one. The one, that, that Urcha, one motor the one a while back, motor. and this is the third same one. Same motor, and this is. Uh, hey, talking about the same motor. motor. I'm talking about how many times have you tightened the carb up? Yeah, but the first two times Half was. Half dozen. The first two times was not. It's, it was because the bolt was the wrong bolt. It was a shoulder bolt. It would never tighten out. Don't blame the bolt. You're the one that put it together. <laughs> I guess I put the same bolt I took out there. <laughs> I guess. Well. <laughs> you know, and I didn't know it was not supposed to be a shoulder bolt. <laughs> That's what was in there. Wow, he's a. But I can see. You that. should run for office, Steve. You're a master deflector. I am. Just keep <laughs> gas prices higher or lower. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I've only had the carb come off once. But um yeah. but yeah, yeah, so this YS one um I don't know. It popped off, but that helicopter's been flying for a while and it's also been sitting for a long, long time now. So I'm surprised more things didn't fall off this helicopter when I flew it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, it's been on the wall for a year. It's a chill out. Last year was the last time I flew it and then, you know. Oh wow. Steve flies and nothing falls off. He's like, wow, it's a good day. I wasn't expecting <laughs> yeah. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see. Is that it? That's it for me. What about Ian? Um, well, uh, I'm going to be uh, on Discord as always. Um, going to do a little bit of wrenching. Not much. Nothing really much to do. Um but I am going to get my ass out to the field on Saturday and get this maiden done. So that's like my biggest goal this week and try to catch up on some sleep. Um, been, been doing some really ridiculous hours. So I'm going to try to take it a little easy this week. Um, this past weekend I did like two 16 hour shifts, like back to back. So I'm like wiped out. Damn. Dude, don't you work in a hospital? Uh, no, I uh, I work in uh, nursing facilities. Oh, uh, nursing facility. Okay, well, aren't there beds there? <laughs> mm, <laughs> I would not sleep in some of those. <laughs> okay. So, oh well, don't you clean the beds? Oh well, yeah. That's why he doesn't want to sleep. <laughs> That's in those why beds. he won't sleep in them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. dude. All right, I get it. Did that once, never again. It's like I'll risk death, death going home. Damn. Especially snowstorms. Wow. Wow. Okay. But uh, yeah, that's that's all I've got this week. Oh, and then uh, patiently wait for uh, this package from Steve to come in. Yes. Cool. We'll hear about it Let's next week. These. Absolutely, and uh, stay tuned for uh, more projects. More tech tips. More. Yeah, I was about to say more tech tips or more projects. What? <laughs> more projects. More projects. Yeah. In a couple of weeks, I'm pulling the trigger on something. Something I've been waiting to build. Okay. 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 Listener pipeline. Let's move it on. Do we have any? Of course. Do we? Nice. We got at least two. Heck yeah. Okay. Yep. So much for catching up on sleep. Was that Chris Breams or was that Gray Eagle Jr.? I think that was Gray Eagle. Wow. Hi, Gray Eagle. <laughs> Thanks for the nightmares. Happy 17 2020. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here's another one. Oh, he's timeless. Hey, my friends at the Free Fall RC podcast. What's up, boys? I got to call in and make a couple of comments. Uh, this guy, Steve, called in. And I want to say he really nailed it, but you know he nailed it, but he sugarcoated it. He said that 
he listened to the last podcast, the last show in December, and he said that the Feliz Navidad sucked. Guys, mm. I'm not I'm not kidding, man. That Feliz Navidad is the worst Feliz Navidad I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it may have been Spanish. It may not have been. We don't know what it was, but it sucks the big wiener is all we can say in South Florida. <laughs> and the bad part is I think that my AV guy actually picked it out. Disgraceful. Mm. Yeah, definitely disgraceful. He Next did. thing is Sean Hall. Man, that guy is full of energy, isn't he? High energy, mm-hmm. no oh, yeah. sleep kind of guy, but he is just rocking and rolling from start to finish. So I really did enjoy his uh, his part of the podcast. We've got to move on to Ian's tool tips. Did you have a good tool tip this weekend? I mean, the boys are really not showing you much love. They're uh, they're sort of really selling you a bit short, Ian. So I'm hoping you gain some respect back from them this week instead of Andy just saying, "Well, uh, another episode of nothing." What the hell, Andy? Okay, next thing is I got to say that uh, Andy doesn't miss much. You know, he commented on something about. Uh, no, wait a minute. Let's back up a minute. Did Steve say he was going to have three helicopters? He had three that were flyable. Uh, and, and somehow I'm having a technical issue with my fireball. So uh, let me back oh. up. I got two that are flyable and one that uh, I got some sort of a, a noise that I'm not liking. But uh, so it's not flyable yet. But this weekend maybe there's a chance. Uh, so I've kind of moved on. I've actually got another goblin that, uh, that will probably very likely, very, very likely to be in the air this weekend. Very, very soon. (laughs) Also, I went in to talk to my boss and her boss last Thursday morning. And I said, you know, it's been fun working here, but I'm not going to do it anymore. And so I quit. (laughs) And and truly, I said, I quit. I'm done. I'm retired. You call it whatever you want to call it, but I'm not going to be coming here to work anymore. Uh, but in the typical fashion that I do some things, <clears throat> I said on or before April the 19th, I quit <clears throat> unless I decide possibly to extend that departure a little bit longer. So uh, we'll see. But stay tuned, boys. Anyway, that's it. Hope you all are doing well. Man, is it cool in Florida? I mean, cold. A bone chilling 59 degrees tonight. Hope the rest of you all in the world are staying a little bit warmer. See ya. Now, can the listeners fully understand what I have to deal with? Did you irritate him so bad he quit his job? Well, yes and no. <laughs> he was going to quit anyway. Yeah. Um, but you understand what I go through? Like, this is the way yeah. he. This is the way he announced that he quit his job to me. Called me up after work, but I don't know six six thirty. Hey, I just want to tell you, I spoke to. You know, all the bosses above me and I quit. I'm done. Um, you know, that's it. Um, I'm, I'm out the door. I'm, I, I thought I was going to last till September, but it's not going to happen. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, uh, 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 and then he's like, I gotta go see you later. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. I click <laughs> hangs up. So I, I text my wife. I'm like, Steve just told me quick. She's like, well, did he give two weeks? Did he give four weeks? Is he coming back tomorrow? Like what's going on? I'm like, I don't know. So I start texting. I'm like, dude, you can't leave me hanging like that. Like, are you are you coming back tomorrow or whatever? No, 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 no. It's nothing like that. It's uh, you know, on or before April nineteenth or possibly but, but after. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe and then later. I'm like, well, that's so exactly what I knew before. April nineteenth in the next yeah. three years. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, so nothing's different. You got me all fired up for nothing. Yeah, it's like uh, what a dick. <laughs> no, right. he, he doesn't mean it to be a dick. I know. I just like giving him a hard time. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping he'll call up and be like, "Fuck off, Andy." Oh yeah, mm-hmm. he will. He will. <laughs> All right. Anything else? Is that it? Mm, that's it. Okay, let's wrap it up. We got a helicopter to build. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Facebook likes. We are at one thousand three hundred ninety-six. New likes is one. Okay. OMP hobby. All right. Woo. Nice. The makers of this little thing. I just crashed into my monitor. Great. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Facebook comments. What do we got? Dude, we got some Facebook comments. One was mm. on last week's episode with Sean Hall. Which was a great episode. I, I enjoyed that a yeah, lot. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that, that, that was, was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Yep. To uh, talk to him. Uh, great Eagle Junior said it's thirty three eleven p.m. Something of placement. 
showing a content goodie sack all. Uh, don't know what that means. Jason Selzman said, hey, guys, I'm currently listening to this episode right now, and thanks for mentioning my comment. I commented that the clone show, uh, I commented on that clone show only because I had just listened to that episode. And personally, I don't know anything about that Tron situation. I have just been researching all the different brands for my next kit. Anyways, I think Andy just said I should have started with free fall first on that. I think I started to listen to you guys once and thought this was an RC car podcast. Mm -hmm, yeah. So I listened to Telerotor. That's where I hear free fall was a heli podcast. Okay. Thanks, I'm, Jason. I'm sorry you had to endure that Taylor Rotor. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Tell you Rotor. I don't even know what's going on with them. It's uh, a jet podcast now. You haven't heard? Yes. Yeah. Tell whoosh, right? Tell whoosh. Yep. Jets and motorcycles. Jets and motorcycles. Yeah, mostly motorcycles, a little yeah. bit of jets. And domestic steel. Yeah, and trips to the hospital. It's going to empty soon. It's going to stop soon. So he gets his motorcycle license as well. So. No, yeah, yeah. They were talking about that Friday night. Uh, Jordan McFarlane said, since y'all were wondering about dates for the Marshall Ranch Fun Fly in Livermore, California. He doesn't sound like that. I know. He said y'all. So. So. so, Heli Beaters Fun Fly 2022 is February 24th to 27th. That's on Patterson Pass Road. 8433 Patterson Pass in Livermore, California. Actually, he might sound like that. He is a farmer. He and they have citrus, I think. <laughs> okay. And that Facebook link has zero friends and 102 guests. Uh, Andy, you said thank you. I don't think I can swing by this year, but I'd love to come probably next year. Mm -hmm. Jordan said, oh, man. Oh, man. It's going to be epic this year for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to go out there. But that said, I'm sure it will be a better event next year. I hope so. I'm going to try to go next year. Steve said he'd, he'd love to make the event maybe next year as well. You want to go, Steve, next year? Yeah, I think this year I'm going to try to, like, I'm going to go with the Heliheads guys to, to um, Arizona. But I think next year we should all, with those guys as well, try to go up to. I agree. At Marshalls. I think that'd be a fun one. Let's do it. Cool. Hell yeah. Mm, Greg Jr. said, Sean Hall, celebration enthusiastically DNA hack TV. Sean Hall said, hey. And Gray Eagle said, woo. Thank you, <laughs> Al Gore, for creating the internet. And uh, Ian posted a meme, Sean flying in 1982, with a clip from the movie he was in. Uh, and then Sean flying in 2022 with a picture of a sad face and his wife looking looking out the window. That's pretty epic, dude. The mm. <laughs> heli crashed in New York. Yeah, that was pretty good. And yeah, uh, also Ian posted me. I don't need to clean the nitro. It's it's not dirty. The NX4. It's the slime monster from Next Generation. Next Generation. Yeah, Star Trek. I thought it was the original. It looks like the original series to yeah. me, but I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. No, no, no. Kevin probably knows. He's a nerd. That was the episode where Tasha Yar got killed by the slime monster. Okay. So yeah, I told you he would know. Because that actress I wanted know to know who pursue. Is it a, it's a, red, a red shirt, I'm guessing? No, no. She was head of security knows. before Worf. And uh, then okay. she wanted to pursue other acting things like Pet Cemetery, and decided to leave the show. Anyway, oh, that's what's her name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The white person. Crosby. Yeah. Her, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The white person. Yeah, 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 the white person. Yeah. Before Wharf, yeah. All right. So I posted something I thought was truly amazing. This guy made a three ducted fan motor with that's pretty cool looking. With uh diversionary vectoring on uh -huh. the tail and he modeled it into like a Star Wars vehicle. So it does cool. vertical takeoff, but then you have to watch this thing fly because cool. he starts to put it in Harrier like an up, upright orientation upper. where it's pointed mm -hmm. straight up. Yeah, it's amazing. And then he's pirouetting it around and 
It was oh, really awesome. cool. You gotta watch the video. I was Sweet. I was blown away. Cool. So I mean, it's like something out of uh, the Avengers almost too, you know? Yeah. In a way. I do. Which, I love cool. the vertical takeoff, like just the, like you know the Harrier style, like just going straight yeah. up like that. That's so cool. But then he rotated the model on its tail like ninety degrees, and he's yeah. just sitting there and he's and hovering. So like. So perfectly still, and then yeah, hovering, and then I'm sure he had gyros and, and stuff. He he had oh, yeah. gyros and stuff. Oh yeah. But yeah. Cool. But just great engineering in that. And did you notice like he made it look like Star Wars? He had like a little R2 on it. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Very cool. Very cool. So that's what I saw on Facebook. Nice. Okay, uh, listener post. I don't know. I don't think I don't we see, have it. I don't see anything new. But I don't. I thought we had something, but I guess not. Uh, last one from Rybert from a couple of weeks ago. So, all right. Uh, website comments. <clears throat> I, I don't we think we have it. anything. Did we? We did, because I remember forwarding one. Oh, yeah, we now. did. Uh, Got it? No. But I can get it. If you give me like 20 minutes. Ah, oh, boy. 20 minutes. I got to work tomorrow, dude. Oh, it's from Jordan McFarlane. Yeah. It's the yeah, Marshall yeah. Ranch Haley Fun cool. Fly dates. Yes. Okay. So, yep. Thanks, Jordan. Went over, so. Thanks, Jordan. Okay. Uh, let's see. People Podbean. All right. People Podbean. We had uh, Steve, like episode 307. Here we go again. Gray Eagle started following us twice. Nick Musco fo- started following us. Brian Bird st- Birdsong started following us. Uh, PP Geo Shaka Zulu started following us. I don't know. It's a collaboration of numbers and letters. Mike Welch and Gray Eagle Jr. liked episode 308. Sean Hall. So did Alan Jenkins. And Heli Man liked episode 302 questions and 303 Black Friday. Nice. So thanks, everybody. Awesome. And we got some comments. Mm, I'll bet we did. All right. So from someone named Steve, great name, by the way, six days ago said, Hey, Knuckleheads, long time <laughs> listener, first time caller. Another great episode and all the best for 22. Um, regarding the numbers of downloads versus likes, remember, most people only make noise when they are not happy. And no way are you guys causing that. <laughs> Keep up the great effort. Steve from New Zealand. Oh, wow. Yeah. Thanks, nice. I guess. Well, thanks, Steve. No way, Andy. This is like the first Steve I actually like. Yeah, seriously. Oh, wow. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> all right. But I'm sure uh, he'll piss me off just like all the rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just give it time. <laughs> give it time. I mean, he yeah. is a Steve after all. <laughs> all right, five days ago, Gray Eagle Jr., excellent luck, wisdom, well, and abundant sauce. TikTok greatness for hobby wing enjoyment. Episode 307, here we go again. Mm-hmm. Uh, who I'm guessing from the, the picture and his name, it's Jordan. Um, what's his last name again? McFarlane. McFarlane, 556, five, or Jordan M. The F556 says, here's a link to the event page for Marshall's Ranch Fun Fight in Livermore Tower. And then there's a link. And the dates are February 24th to 27th, which you said. See, Jordan does it right. He hit us on every Everything. possible avenue yes. so we can right. get these dates out. Heck yeah. That's the way to do it. All right. Uh, Greg Eagle Jr., four days ago, celebrity Sean Halloween. Hack that TV, travel, safety, dance, travel all around, up, down, low, mow down that hello, all my friends. All Word. Right. That was for episode 308. Uh, let's see if another one for episode 308. Hernia, four days ago, says, no, bolts were fine. Scorpion tool was soft and rounded out. So okay, I know what he's talking you, about. Yeah, he, he commented a while back that he had some issues with the Scorpion tools that um went after using an MMP driver, oh, but it, was, oh, it, it yeah, rounded okay. it out. 
it rounded the tool out before like you know normally we were saying mm -hmm. that it rounded the we always round out like the 1.5 before the tool but mm -hmm. he said it's just got rounded out um you should contact scorpion they'll send you a replacement tip I didn't think. he get a second one that did the same thing if i remember um, right talk, yeah maybe talk talk to scorpion hit up george's the owner he'll he'll make it right and last but not least, we have Angelo Almasari. Four days ago to episode 308, Sean Hall, GQ. That's all nice. Awesome. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, guys. iTunes review. What do we have? Nothing new on iTunes. Oh, nice. fantastic. Nothing. Cool. Oh, man. So, so you know, drop us in, uh, drop us an iTunes review, email us, yeah. like us on Facebook, check out our webpage, freefallrcpodcast.show, you know, all that fun stuff. The show. Yep. Check out our fellow podcasters. You know the name. Hey, Chris. If not, listen to ep episode, I don't know, 299, 300. <laughs> Any one of yeah. those episodes <laughs> we have them in there. Go yeah. listen to one of them. All right. And don't forget to check out Bill Ann's YouTube bam, channel. Bam, bam. Okay. Check them Thanks. out. <laughs> Thanks to our listeners. See you guys. And we'll see you next time. See ya. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Dave. Oh, I forgot to say, I, I bought a phone last um, On last episode, I bought a phone. And I found a phone. Nice. I haven't tried it out, but I got that. Yeah. Wait a half,